Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona for Arena Football on a Saturday night. The Latin Laser, that's what folks around here call Nick Davila, the quarterback for the Rattlers. You pit him with Aaron Garcia, and you've got two outstanding Hispanic hurlers looking for a muy grande win tonight. U.S. Airways Center for the Net 10 Wireless Arena Football Saturday on CBS Sports Network. Two undefeated teams. San Jose comes to town to take on Arizona, both with 2-0 records. Hi, everybody. I'm James Bates. So glad to have you with us tonight. How about the matchup we have for you right here in Week 3? The two best teams right now in arena football in what arguably has become the greatest rivalry in all of arena football. Last year, San Jose and Arizona got together three times. Two wins for the Sabercats in the regular season, but then when it all mattered in the first round of the playoffs, it was Arizona victorious. They would go on, of course, to win Arena Bowl 25. Arena Bowl 24, though, Anthony Heron, went to the Jacksonville Sharks. The quarterback of that team, Aaron Garcia, and he has made his way home back to the great state of California. He's a Sacramento State product, and he's been here in California as a kid, and now finally as a professional football player, he comes back, gets to be near his family, and Aaron Garcia is essentially the Brett Favre of the Arena Football League with the astounding numbers that he's put up throughout his career, numbers that rival any other professional football quarterback in the history of the game, but this season, finally getting to be with the San Jose Sabercats, I believe the talent surrounding Aaron Garcia, especially now, having an Arena Bowl championship in his back pocket. He's looking to get number two before he calls it quits. And, and just how astounding are those numbers? You look at that AFL rank all time in the right column there. First, first, and first in completions, passing yards, passing touchdowns. At 42 years old, he just keeps on going like the Energizer Bunny. Well, the guy who supplies all the juice to the Arizona Rattlers, also the quarterback, Nick DeVille, is pretty special as well. And he's a guy that probably rivals Aaron Garcia and maybe the only quarterback in the Arena Football League that you could say is a peer to Aaron Garcia in the way he's perceived around the league. The last couple of seasons he's been in the Arena Bowl, finally got that championship last season, and the numbers this season have been astounding. What he did against Utah last week, finally threw a couple of interceptions. He actually does throw it to the other team on occasion, but Nick Davila, the way he's playing right now, unmatched by anyone else around the Arena Football League. Darren Arbet, the head coach of San Jose, told his team this week, we're about to find out how how good we are. We're going up against the best in just about every category. Arizona, of course, the defending champ. Let's get it on when we come back to Phoenix. Talked at the tax store. I did your taxes. Well, I, I thought you were a tax expert. Major tax stores advertise for preparers with no tax experience necessary. At TurboTax, you only get answers from CPAs, EAs, or tax attorneys. Buckle up for the PBR Built Ford Tough Series. Sunday at 8, only on CBS Sports Network. could say. Hey, 
Let's go. Hey, 60 minutes. 60 minutes. That's all we're going to do. 60 minutes. Good or bad, stick together. All I want you to do is turn to each other and say, it's a 60 minute game. Good or bad, all right? It's 60 minutes, all right? Let's break. So, you know, we're the division game, okay? We'll have a lot more of our playoff standings now. Let's go out there and take care of business. Be physical tonight. Be the most physical get a team out there now. It's going to be a physical game because we're going to make it a physical game, okay? Play hard, play smart. Don't let your emotions get out of check now. There's going to be some highs and lows. Play through it. Let's go, okay? Here we go. Prayer. <coughs> We welcome you back, and as we peek inside the locker rooms here at the U.S. Airways Center, we're reminded it's a long game and it's a physical game. Nobody knows that more than the winningest quarterback in the history of the AFL, Seth Bonner, and with him, a gentleman that knows that quite as well. Thanks, guys. Hey, team. After everything you've been through, over 55,000 yards, over 1,200 touchdowns, what brings you back to this arena tonight? This is every night, every game, you know, just trying to get better each and every week. Here with a new team, we're trying to get to a championship, and this is a step along the way. With this new San Jose Sabre Cup, Sabre Cup team, we've got a lot of young guys mixed with some older guys. What's been the leadership role of the older guys, and what have they put on to the young guys? Man, just trying to lead by example and be able to talk to people when they need a little bit of help. But, you know, folks are bad in this organization. have always done a great job doing that. Putting us in a situation now to come out here and just play ball. Thanks, AD. Appreciate right, it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, Seth. As AT goes to get set, we'll get you set with some rules of the game. A few highlights as you scan that, Anthony, here from the watch pool. So the running clock is going to last until the final minute of the East half, so the action moves fast and furious in the Arena Football League. No punting allowed, no outside stunning or twisting, but you can twist a bit between the back and the nose guard, and then the ball off the rebound net is live every time it comes off the rebound net. And be aware of that high motion, both one wide receiver in motion before every snap. When you talk about the best teams in ball, obviously you're going to have some pretty good coaches. Darren Arbett, his 13th season as the head coach, three-time Arena Bowl champion, his 17th season in all with San Jose. AFL Hall of Famer, and over to the other sideline, it's Kevin Guy in his 13th season as well. Record of 104 and 43 as a head coach, and he led these Rattlers to their first Arena Bowl championship in over a decade last season. Now set to take it off the net for the visiting San Jose Sabercats is Brookings. And kicking it away, Garrett Lindholm in his second year from Tarleton State. And keep an eye on number seven, not just the rest of the cover guys. In week one, he had maybe the biggest hit of the game. And everybody's after this series here. San Jose leading, as we mentioned off the top, two wins for the Sabercats in the regular season last year, but the one that meant the most, the first round of the playoffs went the way of the Rattlers and nobody stopped them. Six. A 2-0 start for both teams, and here we go. Well, not the way Lindholm wanted to start it, as he'll kick it out of bounds. So it'll be decent field position to start for Aaron Garcia his offense. 1,208 career touchdown passes for Aaron Garcia. So many different franchises he's been with throughout his Arena Football League career. Off to a bit of a slow start by Aaron Garcia's standards. 12 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. He's getting used to a new offense. This San Jose Sabercats terminology. Willis in high motion, trouble with the snap. That's a helmet that goes rolling back past the 10. So some drum on the first snap for the catch. The matchup inside between the nose guard and Taj Hawthorne and the center from San Jose, Raymond McNeil. That's it, big fellas. He's bringing a quick swim move inside. They're worried about the nose in this entire defensive front from Arizona because they bring heat very consistently and they can do it from multiple positions. Dukes, Hawthorne, Pittman, as good as it gets across the front. Time this time for Garcia, and he connects with Willis, one of his favorite targets throughout his career. They've made five different stops together, these two, Willis and Garcia. As we take a look down at the bottom of your scorebook up top, and starting defense 
for the hometown Rattlers. You mentioned those three guys up front. Glasper, as good as they come at the max spot, Gary Reed, an Ironman playing both ways. And it's Brown, Gray and Floyd in the secondary. Last play resulted in a first down. This one a little swing over to Whitaker. Whitaker fights his way forward for about five. How about a couple difference makers with this San Jose offense to start? Well, the pass protection is going to be key for Garcia. We've already seen that early in the game. Devin Clark, for the football player, who just signed this week. He's an experienced arena football league player, but they just got him in the lineup, and he's going to be matched up a lot tonight with Cliff Dukes, maybe the, the most well-rounded pass rusher in the arena football league. Highly regarded potential future Hall of Famer. So we'll pick up a four. It'll be second down. The six for Garcia. He puts it. He's dropped. Pittman gets to him. First second of the game on the first series for big Marcus Pittman. Now we've seen Marcus Pittman get the end zone on that 10 wireless arena football Saturday, but he prefers to get to the quarterback. So you see how he can bring it off the edge. Just a quick outside move as they slide the protection. He's matched up with the fullback. Brian Fulkers gets into his pad, snatches off, and Aaron Garcia is just sitting there waiting in the waiting arms of Marcus Pittman. Touchdowns are fun, but as a defensive end, you want to get sacks. Well, the rookie fullback needs to do a better job on the Confederate defensive end there. Connection down the field again. It's Willis short of the 10-yard line. It's Gray on the tackle, so it'll bring a fourth down and about five, they'll call it. Needed for the first. Part of the relationship between Aaron Garcia and Jason Willis. Willis already has two receptions early in this game so far, but they've been teammates of three different teams so far. The New York Dragons, Jacksonville Sharks, now here with the San Jose Sabercats. He came here to San Jose with Aaron Garcia. Looking the way, and Willis again is kicked in and picked. Intercepted. number 36 for Marquise Ford. We just saw him seal the deal for the Arizona Rattlers two weeks ago in our season opener. Great pressure from Cliff Dukes. The tip ball falls right into the hands of Marquise Ford, and he's Johnny on the spot. Like I told you, he's done it 35 other times in his career. He knows what to do with the football when it's in his hand. What up, my girl? I told you I was going to give you one. Extra point drive from Lindholm is good, and it's a seven-point lead, and we haven't even seen that Rattler offense yet. First drive for San Jose, a pick six for Floyd. We'll be right back to Phoenix. Break the news gently. We need to leave our contract plan for Nets and Wireless. What? Says who? Change can be difficult. I love my phone. Yeah, she loves her phone. You could keep your phone and number, but for half of what we pay now. Half? I don't love our family plan. It doesn't mean I don't love you. Welcome to the next generation of family plans. $50 for the first line, $40 each new line with unlimited everything. Visit net10wireless.com. We're marching through the Final Four and breaking down the matchups. You're getting ready to play on the biggest stage of your life in front of all of America that's watching. When you think about teams coming from unexpected places to advance in the NCAA tournament, they have to be able to win close games. It's money time now. It's all this. You know what I want to be when I grow up? I want to be a 12 seed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Don't miss NCAA March Madness Bracket Breakdown, presented by Buick, tonight at 11.30, only on CBS Sports Network.
is soon in the 2011 Defensive Lineman of the Year in the Arena Football League, already making a difference. Cliff Dukes makes a quick inside move on Devin Clark, making his first start for San Jose. Ball tipped up in the air, and Marquise Floyd. He's about as opportunistic as it comes in the AFL. And when that ball's in flight, all bets are off. There's no more pass interference, no more worrying about whether you're going to pick up a penalty. It's about getting the ball, getting to the paint. So one more time, Brookins will be out there to take it off the net after Lynn Holmes' kick. San Jose fans, well, they got used to the interception returns for touchdowns back when Marquise Floyd was a safer cat. 07 and 08, he had two pick sixes. This time he does it for his old team. This one's going to come off. The bar comes off the crossbar, bounces back out into play and whistles dead. the opening series, Ant, that Aaron Garcia wanted to have coming back to the place where he started his career. We referenced over 1,200 career touchdown passes, only quarterback in professional football history, but he's also the all-time leader in AFL history with nearly 190 career interceptions. I mean, season 18, he's been here, he's done this before, Aaron Garcia will certainly answer the call. Whitaker in motion, there is a flag down, Whitaker goes up to get it, looks like he almost lost the ball, a gain of about seven, but we'll check on the flag. It's about the alignment of the fullback. You're allowed to be in a neutral position directly behind the quarterback or the center, but you can't be too far up into the line of scrimmage. And that's the, the inclination you have as a blocker where you want to get up into the line and make sure you're able to be in position to take that pressure from the back linebacker coming at you. Willis in high motion, but going right down the boards. The intended target that time was Williams. Hit him in the hand, but he can't pull it in. It was Brown with him, right in his hip pocket. And that's what Garcia does best, is throws that deep ball on the money. Without a doubt, and he's willing to hold the football. You see, even back in his own end zone, he's got no problem waiting. He'll take a hit. We've seen him take some big shots already in this ball game. But this is what Eric Garcia is known for, but he's got to be able to count on his teammates, fast players like Bass Freddie Williams, to come up with that pass. First action from Freddie Williams. You pointed out earlier Devin Clark having a little bit of trouble in his first game of the year. Williams as well. This pass will go right back to Freddie Williams. And he fights forward there near the first down marker. So a third down is short coming up. Let's listen in on that San Jose huddle. Garcia, there's a bit of hesitation, not completely comfortable with the verbiage in this Sabercats offense yet. Some things he got, like the guy who just caught that pass, Willis, to come along, but he didn't get his wish in changing the terminology. It's terminology that has been around here for a long time in San Jose and has worked. Worked very well for the Sabercats, one of the preeminent franchises in the AFL. So even though you're uncomfortable with the verbiage in the huddle, but you're so comfortable with your playmaker and Jason Willis because they've been together so much over the years. These guys have gotten it done at a high level with a multitude of organizations around the AFL. Dukes is offside, killing this play. So a little bit too early there for the guy who stirred it up earlier, batting the ball. Side, defense. Number six, unabated the quarterback. That's a five-yard penalty. Repeat, first down. Wiley, veteran thought process from Aaron Garcia. You have to use that snap count, especially if you got some offensive linemen who may struggle against very talented pass rush. Keep the defensive front on balance. Now, here, this is one thing. This slows a Cliff Dukes down, slows him down a step. Why? Because if he jumps off sides one more time in this half, he's done for the half. Trying to keep the pace of the game. 
fast and furious. That's the way they like it here in Arena Football. Willis and Garcia unable to hook up. Willis had a couple steps on the nearest rattler. But they come up empty. Second down and five. Jason Willis ran between two different areas of the zone coverage from Arizona. And so initially it looked like Virgil Gray was going to have a one-on-one. -on -one. And then Arkeith Brown gave help over the top. Just to the back corner, Aaron Garcia just overthrows Wilson. Then AG knows he missed an opportunity right there. Whitaker in high motion, looking his way, and then back to the other side of the field to Willis, who's forced into the boards and out of bounds, two yards shy of the marker by Ford. Sense, big Ant. These are a couple big downs here. San Jose early in this game, but they need to do something. Looking for Williams. Williams across the back of the end zone, pulls it down. Touchdown. They dip one up to the defense, and then they go right back at him and hit the paint in his first start of the year. Fred Williams. I talked to you about Aaron Garcia being, being willing to hold the football until Williams works over the coverage because R.K. Brown is always looking to undercut a route, hoping to make that big play. And so when you run over a route, it takes time to develop. Aaron Garcia has the time in the pocket on a driver. He had already taken a couple of big hits, and Fred Williams, after failing his quarterback earlier in the drive, comes up big right there. Fletcher with the snap, the hold by Willis, and Pertwee with the extra point. It's good, and we're tied at seven. Well, one for the Rattler defense, and one right back at you from San Jose. by Net 10 Wireless. No contract wireless on America's best networks. It's a tradition unlike any other. Don't miss week-long coverage leading up to the Masters with Masters on the Range starting Monday at noon Eastern only on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Uh, somebody's feeling pretty good these days. Tiger Woods. Ready for another? There's the... Impressive 2013 that he has put together already. Controversial ad that came out this week. Did you see it, Ann? Uh, it's the best. Winning, winning. Basically, winning makes everything okay. <laughs> Is that right? It certainly helps a little bit. Must be fun to live in that universe. I guess so. <laughs> Bertwee. Taking it off the net is Perry. Here's Perry. Across the five, so we'll get our first look at this Rattler offense led by Nick Davila. When we come back, Garcia already has seven in the books. We're tied. Every child deserves hope and healing. Specialized care. 170 hospitals strong. There's one near you. They all need your support. Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. Helping local kids. Hi, I'm Kyle Chandler. When a high school football player suffers a catastrophic spinal cord injury, Eddie and Chris Canales and the Gridiron Heroes step in to support this injured athlete and his family financially and emotionally. They help keep the lights on, keep food on the table, and they provide wheelchairs and wheelchair accessible vehicles. I'm Eddie Canales, and this is my son Chris. Please log on to gridironheroes.org to find out more about Gridiron Heroes and how you can help support. 
So please join us in supporting the great iron. Hot water means working hard in the classroom and on the field. Never giving up. Following your dreams. Just a few of the values over 400,000 children learn every day in Pop Warner football, cheer, and dance. 70% of all NFL players play Pop Warner. Pop Warner means tomorrow's NFL stars. Pop Warner, your future begins here. At Echo, we believe you should never settle for less than professional grade outdoor power equipment. During the Echo Trade Up and Save event, you can buy America's top rated timber for less than $200 by participating retailers. Echo, get serious. Do I use new Gold Bond Men's Lotion to look good or feel good? Yes, I do. New Gold Bond Men's Lotion. Skin strengthening proteins plus seven intensive moisturizers. Anna with Gold Bond. the U.S. Airways Center. There's your quarterback for the Arizona Rattlers. Seven touchdown passes last week in the throttling of Utah. 77-49 the final. And Nick Davila, the Latin laser as they're going around here. Fourth in the AFL right now with 294.5 passing yards a game. Tyson Poots, there you see our starting lineup. Had a big game going back to Utah last week as well. He's in the high motion, going to him first play. Front scrimmage, missed tackle, and there goes Poots. Poots inside the 15. Brookings had him wrapped up for a short game, but couldn't drag him down. There's a precision to the way that Tyson Poots runs his routes. But he's certainly not a speed burner, but he hits his mark, throttles down, and he's got such quiet hands. There's no fear. Whether he's got the ball in his hands or not, he's not afraid of contact. And Nick Davila, even though this is only the second game he's played with Tyson Poots, he knows precisely where to throw it. Reed in the high motion, and here's the pitch to Armstrong. Not much there for Armstrong. Let's get it down to Seth Bonner. Except you come back with a nice touchdown drive. Talk about it. Well, I mean, receivers doing a good job. Even that first drive, I had Jay Will open. Ball gets tipped. Those are some of the things you can't control. But, but we got to try and minimize these turnovers as a group. So we come back, and you got to answer. This team is going to be a long night, 60 minutes, and that's what we try to do. Are they doing anything to you that you haven't seen on film? No, they're good up front. They're going to put pressure on us, and we just got to hold tough, stay together. Receivers are doing a good job. I got to, I got to keep them stay down. And we got to keep playing all night. Thanks, AB. Back up to you guys. All right, Seth, thank you. And if there isn't a bad wheel there on that body of Seth Bonner, they're both probably <laughs> playing tonight. 42 and 44, right? Right. Offense, number 51, five-yard penalty, remains second half. Here's Dave Kataya tell us for center, Billy Eisenhart. He's one who's offside, or false start, I guess, in this case. Knocks it back as an offense, but the interesting thing about this, now you're back to the 15-yard line, Batesy, and it actually gives you more of a route tree that you can run. You have some space beyond the end zone. You can allow routes to develop a little bit better than when you're inside the 10, they you so condensed. There's Reed in high motion again, looking for him, and the lefty fires the Poots! Touchdown! Nice looking opening drive for this offense, and Arizona with the lead one more time. Oh, look at the four! You don't need to watch the final four tonight, you got Tyson Poots shooting the hoops. We're going to watch a quarterback in his comfort zone because Nick Davila, as the pressure comes, he feels it. So his eyes don't go down to the rush. His eyes stay downfield on Tyson Poots, and he just calmly shuffles back outside the pocket, throws the football before Poots even came out of his break and put it on the money. Eisenhart, the new center this year, with the long snap, Murrieta with the hold, and the extra point is good. Poots had his first game back last week, a big one against Utah. He starts off right where he left off. Book ahead and save up to 20% at Doubletree.com, so you can sit back, relax, and enjoy. Doubletree by Hilton where the little things mean everything.
If you have a tax question, you don't want a tax <clears throat> expert. You want a tax expert. All TurboTax experts are CPAs, EAs, or tax attorneys. Plus, we've got experts to support you all year round. And they're ready now. TurboTax. We're marching through the Final Four and breaking down the matchups. You're getting ready to play on the biggest stage of your life in front of all of America that's watching. When you think about teams coming from unexpected places to advance in the NCAA tournament, they have to be able to win close games. It's money time now. It's all this. You know what I want to be when I grow up? I want to be a 12 seed. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. Don't miss NCAA March Madness Bracket Breakdown, presented by Buick, tonight at 11.30, only on CBS Sports Network. While we are all created equal, teams are not. Teams venture into uncharted waters, challenge the laws of physics, and pull off the impossible together. Instead of running their mouths, teams roll up their sleeves and run out on the field together. I play for team. It's amazing to watch a guy throw the ball down the field. It says when you think about measurables of the quarterback, obviously you in 6'4", 6'5", 230 pounds. Aaron Garcia is such a diminutive guy. After this snap, I'd like to get your thoughts on the mechanics he uses in the pocket and how he's so effective. So from his own end zone, here's Willis. Willis with plenty of room, and he gets a block by Whitaker. Across midfield, down to the 20 of Arizona on the first play of this drive. As Jason Willis appears in the screen, it's going to be a quick motion, and he runs what's essentially a slant route, but it stops right there in the zone, and so as Garcia delivers him the football, he's out in space. Clean pocket, three-step drop, defense didn't seem quite ready as the offense broke the huddle. Hugh Whitaker blocking downfield is impressive, playing both sides of the ball. All the time Garcia needs. We've got bodies down on the turf and a flag coming up. Probably a pass interference on Brown here. There's no foul for pass interference. The feet were tangled. 
Dave Kataya, our head referee here tonight, explaining there will be no penalty. Just take another look at it. All kinds of time in the pocket. Aaron Garcia even pumped the football once. I like the call. And even in live action, I didn't think it would have been something that should have been flagged. I'm glad they picked that one up. Simmons, the high motion man. Wow, Dukes right on top of Garcia. He flattens him at the 20. And the ball ends up hitting the boards in the back of the end zone. Slow to get up, needing a little bit of help is Aaron Garcia. I talked to George Bussey, the guard for the San Jose Sabercats before the game, about this matchup right there between himself and Cliff Dukes. And the versatility that Dukes can rush the quarterback with, because we've seen him make the quick inside move, and there you see him bring the power. After he brings the power, snatches off the guard, and now he just lays heavy on the little 195-pound Aaron Garcia. And as my partner here, defensive lineman in the NFL and AFL knows, one move works, and they all start to work on those linemen. You can mix it up a little bit. They'll only flag down the field. If this stands, it should be a first down for Simmons. Whitaker may have been running that defensive back out of there. Being a little bit too physical. Speaking of physicality. Yeah, physicality still going here. They're mixing it up down on field level Hold a bit. It. Defense. That penalty's declined. First down. Says Judge Wapner playing the people's court here in the background here at the U.S. Airways Center. Right trip. Oh, that's the five. Let's go 50. This is going to take a little bit of time to develop here. DeMarco Simmons is going to come in most. We're going to watch Jason Willis right there run a rip. Wow. Now the pass rush right up the middle. They do not get to Garcia. Six points for the Sabercats. Simmons with the touchdown this time. Jason Willis is the only wide receiver that has a pass with Aaron Garcia. DeMarco Simmons played with him in Jacksonville as well. Big physical target. I love Aaron Garcia's game when he does get the ball out of his hands quickly. There's such a willingness to hold the football and take those big hits looking for the touchdowns. But on moments like that, where he hits the third step, it's out on time, it looks clean, he makes it look easy. Um, welcome back Tommy Taggart, who hurt his back here last year. Rehab, missed the first two games, and he had a big block there on Glasser to give Garcia plenty of time. And with that, we're tied at 14. The extra point is good, so back and forth we go early here in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. That's the end of the first quarter. You're watching Net 10 Wireless Arena Football Saturday on CBS Sports Network. We're Rascal Flats, and we are so proud to serve as ambassadors for the Jason Foundation and all of its efforts in addressing the national health problem of youth suicide. Are you aware that suicide is the third leading cause of death for our youth ages 10 to 24, only surpassed by accidents and homicide? It's also one of the leading causes of preventable death in our nation today. So whether you're a student, educator, or parent, you can help make a difference in your own community. Visit JasonFoundation.com to learn how you can start making a difference today. From Iraq and Afghanistan, our brave warriors are coming home, wounded. Some with wounds you can see, some with wounds you can't see. Wounded Warrior Project was created to support our men and women coming off the battlefield. Please help carry these warriors the rest of the way home. Get involved at WoundedWarriorProject.org.
He's tearing into headlines with some of the biggest newsmakers in the game. These two dudes have nothing in common other than one's a quarterback and one wants to be a quarterback. If you don't watch Rome, they're a mess, they're a circus, and worst of all, they are quitters. You don't know smack. Rome, presented by Chevrolet, weeknights at 6, only on CBS Sports Network. The average 401k will run out of money seven to eight years in retirement, according to the Employee Benefit Research Institute in Washington, D.C. Tax increases or another severe market drop could wipe out your savings even faster. Millions of Americans are going to run out of money right when they need it most, when they're no longer earning an income. You don't have to be one of them. We have a free video that shows how the wealthiest people in America create tax-free lifetime retirement income without ever losing a penny in the stock market, and how you can too. Call now for this free video. You'll also receive a free analysis of this retirement vehicle tailored specifically to your needs and a free comparison to your current plan. If you're 25 or older and don't yet have a plan, you need to start one now. Don't wait until it's too late. Call now for your complimentary video, analysis, and comparison. There's no obligation, so you have nothing to lose. Call now. the Titans here in the West Division, two of the best teams in arena football, not the way Aaron Garcia wanted to start this rivalry on the opening drive. It's Floyd with the pick six, but next time out, finding his target in the back of the end zone, that's Williams, his first touchdown of the year. Boots coming off a big week at Utah for Arizona, and we just ended the first quarter with an answer for San Jose. Tied at 14 as we compare our two quarterbacks through the first 15 minutes. I wouldn't be surprised if Nick Davila just yawned or something right here. I mean, we haven't seen a lot of the Latin laser so far in this football game. Just one drive, two out of two. Nice, easy touchdown pass for the Rattlers. And other than that, it's been the Rattlers' defense versus this Sabercats offense. Virgil Gray waiting to take it off the net. He'll take it off the iron and won't get his hands on it as it bounces into the first row. And Oh, Sam, he's going to good share with his daughter. He's taking that one home. And be sure to check out arenafootball.com for all the latest news and information on the Arena Football League. While you're there, be sure to check out the AFL Team Fan Shop for the latest team gear. Check out arenafootball.com today. It's like a guy right there has been at the AFL Fan Shop. <laughs> Get some of his Rattlers gear. Do they sell bald head name <laughs> at that shop? You're going to have to go to arenafootball.com to find out. <laughs> play call backed up into your end zone but Odie Armstrong executes it to perfection. He's a guy who knows how to find the end zone. Over the last couple of seasons he's had 19 total touchdowns, 17 total touchdowns. Early in this season he's got his hands on the football in a variety of ways for the Rattlers and so even though Odie Armstrong had great blocker at the point of attack he is certainly versatile enough and he's shown it throughout his career to hurt you with the ball. Second team all AFL last year was Odie. Boots again! Opposite end of the field, same result. Tyson Poots, two big touchdown catches. They make it look easy, but believe me, you folks at home watching it, it is not this easy, especially when maybe the greatest defensive back in the history of the Arena Football League is in coverage. Lee Van Thomas is going to be matched up with Tyson Poots. That's the matchup right there. And he's going to have the time to run a corner out. And Nick Davila puts the football where only his wide receiver, they call him Thor. Tyson Poots going out, dropping the hammer on Lee Van Thomas. I don't think Thor can dance like that. <laughs> well, 
when you catch eight balls, last week, Tyson Coach, four of them going for touchdowns, you get a chance to practice your touchdown celebration. You saw him shooting hoops earlier and shimmy it a little bit after that one. It's 21-14. Lee Van Thomas, what a start for him here in his eighth season, all with San Jose. Four picks on the year three in the big win over Orlando last weekend. He is a Hall of Famer with an asterisk in front of it. Isn't that right? There's your Hall of Fame induction class next week up in Iowa. And obviously I've said goodbye. We've been working the sidelines throughout the season. One of the inductees, Mike Daly, Clint Golzell, Randy Gatewood, Coach Mike Owensey, William Nero, one of the founders of Clee Van Thomas. He's been elected to the Hall of Fame but decided to come out of retirement this season and put his Hall of Fame induction on hold. One of the, you know, kind of an unprecedented situation we find ourselves in. But Clee Van Thomas says, you know what? The Hall of Fame can win. I feel like playing some more football. <laughs> He feels like helping his old team. There's a lot of helping the youth down in his hometown of Miami, Florida. That's what he did mostly in the past four years that he took off. And the rule is, you, your career has to be three years over before you can be inducted, elected into the Hall of Fame. We've got Seth Bonner going in, and that was the case with Thomas. Now, when he is done playing officially, he won't have to wait three more years, right? They, they, since he's been voted in, he'll go right in next class, correct? Correct. Well, Lee Van Thomas and that entire defense wearing the white uniforms tonight here at the U.S. Airways Center. They haven't had much dialed up to be able to stop this Arizona Rattler team. Here comes their offense. Willis had it right in his hands, and Gray pops him immediately, jarring the ball loose. Jason Willis normally very dependable hands. Just runs it out right, but you'll love the form of the tackle from Virgil Gray. Puts his hat right on the outside, runs through contact. Well, Big Ant, you love the form. You also love the note call. A lot of times in the outside game, that one's good in the flag. You can see a little stir it up a little bit there. Perhaps not on the same page. Looking for Williams, who had the touchdown grab earlier. Great job covering stride for stride down the field there by the cornerback. That might be Whitaker that was good. We've seen Aaron Garcia getting picked up off the ground repeatedly throughout the ball game today. Roughly every other snap, there's the Sabercats offensive line that's picking up their QB this time. It's Ray McNeil. Turns around. Good pressure from the back linebacker, Tyree Glasper. Has to turn around and pick up A.G. It was Brown on the coverage. Here's a big third down and ten now for A.G. and company. From his own end zone. Could be a flag, but they won't get one. Look at the direction of Williams. So incomplete. And here's your fourth down and ten. Good job defensively. Back-to-back -back plays by Brown. And it's going to bring up decision time here on fourth down. Was he early? I don't believe so. R.T. Brown deciding to overcut the route as opposed to undercutting, playing over the top, allowing the receiver to position and then just coming in late with the fight. Under 10.50 to play in the first half. This is the Radio Football League action. Fourth and 10 from your own five-yard line in the Sabercats going for it. Willis in the high motion. Time for Garcia. Looking for Willis. Intercepted. Recovery coming back underneath it. Gray picks it off. Ball is still live as he gets a couple blocks down the field. And then gives Fancy as he tried to get it over to kill him. And what a job recovering by Gray, who was beaten by five steps. A little bit too much air under the Garcia ball, perhaps. Well, there's no punching. In the Arena Football League, as we mentioned in the open, and so on fourth down, the ball's in flight. Birds are great. If he's thinking on his toes, maybe he just let that one hit the ground, but you have to do something because it was looking into the waiting hands of Jason Willis. So if you turn back shoulder, maybe just deflect the football. But when Aaron Garcia laid one up for grabs, Birds are great. He's been a ball hawk throughout his career. He took one back to the house on Tommy Grady last week. 
six interceptions the Rattlers had on Utah last week in the league. Hit it, he throws the field, but he connects down the field with Windsor. Flags all over the place at the line of scrimmage and also deep in the secondary. number 69. Illegal contact, number 19, defense. Those penalties offset. Replay first down. Well, first to hold, that's on Michael Huey. And it's tough duty for Michael Huey because he had Dustin Warren coming around the edge, and really both these edge rushes, Jamari Fletcher as well, just working off of Huey. Does a nice job snatching off. Which is going to have to have a big imprint on this game tonight with Maurice Purify being out of the lineup. Things are in high motion. They won't get this playoff. His flags will stop it. Encroachment. Defense number 94. Contact. Five-yard penalty. Names for a Well, we saw Windsor on the play. That was taken away with the big catch. The 2010 Rookie of the Year, a big difference maker, or he needs to be anyway, tonight for his team. He's certainly going to have to be for the Arizona Rattlers. And you mentioned that 2010 season, an AFL rookie record, 193 receptions for nearly 2,400 yards. Almost 50 touchdowns, and he will be matched up predominantly with Cleve Van Thomas. We've already talked about one of the all-time greats. All underneath, and Perry turned and went before he had the ball secured. Jared Perry would have walked into the end zone. For all you young football players, and especially you young wide receivers, don't think about catching the ball with speed, catching it with your hands, and catch the football with your eyes. Jared Perry, last season's AFL Rookie of the Year, took his eyes off the football. You know better than that, Jared Perry. You gotta look it all the way in, and you're smelling the paint. And when you look at Perry and Purify, who's not playing tonight, Windsor, those are the last three Rookie of the Year winners in arena football. That one too easy as well. They go right back to Kerry Reed, and it's touchdown Reynolds. Kerry Reed plays the Iron Man role for the Arizona Rattlers because he's not only a wide receiver, but they play him the jack linebacker as well. You need some toughness when you play wide out in the AFL. And he's one-on-one -on -one out in space with J.C. Neal. He has all kinds of time to operate. And you saw it wasn't a push-off, but as soon as Kerry Reed steps into the end zone, just flattens out the route at the proper moment, and that's where Nick Davila delivers the football. Extra point is good, and the lead is 14 with under 8 to play in the first half. Well, Kerry Reed now with a touchdown reception in seven straight games. It was J.C. Deal giving chase on that one. Oh, hey, it's... Sabercats quarterback, tough as nails, Aaron Garcia, and he's had to be so far in tonight's ball game because he has been under siege from the Rattlers' defensive front. They've got blood in their fingertips, and they've been hunting Aaron Garcia back in the pocket. The back linebacker brought it off the edge. Cliff Dukes has brought it, laying heavy on the quarterback and the force of the gut. That's how you keep a quarterback off balance. Only 10 out of 18 in the game so far for Garcia. Two touchdowns with two costly IMTs. Arizona's got to find a way to make sure they can keep him under that kind of pressure. Well, Anthony, we had the conversation earlier today, and, and you were on some teams that early on in his career, you really got after Aaron Garcia, sacked him all night long, but that can be frustrating because it doesn't affect him. Very much so. You've got a quarterback who continues to get up, continues to dust himself off, and acts like you haven't had any effect on him, it really frustrates you as a pass rusher. That's one of the hallmarks 
for Eric Garcia. I mean, you know, the measurables that we were mentioning earlier, only 6'1", 195 pounds, and he's 42 years old. But taking these kinds of shots in the pockets, you haven't seen him get on his teammates, haven't given anyone a hard time. And the defensive front, at some point, you wonder, are we really having an effect on this game when he continues to come back? Quick check of Anthony Heron's fingernails. He does not still have any quarterback blood underneath it. Very clean fingernails up here in the booth. So swinging this one out to Williams. Williams pushing forward and thrown into the sticks. He'll be up near the first down yardage needed. I really like Fred Williams as a weapon in this offense. He's the guy who's got kind of the afterburners in him. He can hit that fifth gear, so Hughes Whitaker gives you the big physical target, especially down in the red zone. Jason Willis gives you a little bit of everything, but they think that Fred Williams is the guy who can really be the home run threat. Williams out of St. Cloud State. This time it's Whitaker in motion. Looking back to Williams, who does a good job of going back to get this one, hauling it in. And a nice play there down deep into Rattler territory. I gave Fred Williams a hard time on the ball that he wasn't able to track down where Aaron Garcia tried to hit him on the deep ball. But here, this is a nice adjustment. That's what you have to be able to do, especially with the odd angles, the confusing windows that the football gets delivered through and to. In the AFL, you have to be able to make adjustments on the fly. Williams takes a sip, so it's Willis Whitaker and Simmons in the game. Simmons in the high motion. Time for Garcia, but it's picked. Intercepted again. And nobody's going to touch Reed, the Jack linebacker. Snatches that one right to him. And the third-year player out of Michigan State has the second touchdown for the Arizona defense here tonight. Terry Reed was an all-Big Ten wide receiver for the Spartan State team. So when you're going to deliver the football anywhere near his cage, we know he's got the ability to go out and snatch the football. No pressure on Garcia at this point. That's the guy you're watching, the Jack linebacker. He works the lateral part of the box. As he moves sideways, he sees, he eyes the quarterback, knows where Garcia is delivering the football, snatches it, and like a deep in the night, he goes the distance. Extra point is good, and isn't that the beauty of arena football, Iron Man football? Gary Reed showing it right here, not just catching passes on the offensive side, but here he got a little fame from the stick-up game, a pick six. Be positive, yet firm. We need to leave our contract plan and make the move to Net 10 Wireless. What? Oh, nice. Let's just have our calls drop all the time. Net 10 uses the same cell towers as the top carriers, but for half of what we pay now. Yeah. Don't worry. Confusion is normal, but it's better this way. But what if... What if... Welcome to the next generation of family plans. $50 for first line, $40 each new line with unlimited everything. Visit net10wireless.com. Yes, no filler, no balance, just full throttle run. Arena football fans, grab the hottest officially licensed Arena Football League team gear from shop.arenafootball.com. Look like a true fan by heading to shop.arenafootball.com for hundreds of authentic AFL team items. Get the best customer service, 365-day hassle-free returns, and flat rate shipping on any size order. All at the official online store of the Arena Football League at shop.arenafootball.com. Mom! Dad! Why wait till school ends for the fun to begin? When we can totally go to Orlando in May or June and do more of the stuff we love. Dad, we can have our rides. Mom, we can catch more shows. Sis, we can meet more characters and still get plenty of pool time. Plus, we still have our summer fun to look forward to. So, what do you say? Shall we start packing? There's time for more, isn't it?
today at visitorlando.com slash more. In the win over Orlando, Aaron Garcia connected with five different receivers. He had seven touchdowns. Well, the only way you can get better than five is to throw it to the teams in the opposite color uniform. Floyd takes a deflected pass. And then it's another interception by Gray. The third pick of the night, though, doing the most damage. And really, the one that is on Garcia's shoulders the most throws it right to the Jack linebacker. And it's a touchdown the other way for Kerry Reed. And that is the difference. The three interceptions and the 21 points off of them is really going to make it a steep hill to climb for this squad. Now look at the defensive coordinator, Omar Smith for Arizona, who did a lot of that damage defensively wearing a San Jose uniform. He played eight years for the Sabercats, won four championships. with the defensive MVP of Arena Bowl 21 off the net. And here we go with Brookings. Brookings, a little bit of room to wiggle. Some blocks picked up, and here goes Brookings, up across the 15, down to near the 10. Sabercats fans have seen in very recent history that Mervyn Brookings is a guy who can change the game in a heartbeat. Last week against Orlando, San Jose trailed late that ball game. Brookings took it back 58 yards for a touchdown with only 27 seconds remaining. He's got the wiggle. He's got the want to. He always has the touchdown. Well, there was definitely some want to on that whole return unit. A lot of white jerseys going up and picking up a second block. Pass intended for Whitaker, too high over to the San Jose bench. Jason Willis, the high motion man on second down and ten, looking for Willis, touchdown! Gets his favorite receiver for many years, does Aaron Garcia, right on target in the corner. That's what it's supposed to look like on the back end. You certainly don't want your quarterback taking these kind of hits like Aaron Garcia has been taking. He took another shot on that play. But as far as the route running of Jason Willis and the timing, the placement of the football for the quarterback Aaron Garcia, that's textbook. a bit low. Good job by Willis to place it for Bertwee. And extra point is good. 14 point ball game. Back down to Cedric Bond. Nick, let's talk about the role your offense is on right now. How comfortable is it for you out there with these receivers? Uh, it feels like I've been playing with them for years, you know. But we got to keep battling. we got three minutes left in the second quarter and a whole other half to play. So we got we to gotta keep battling. They're a good team, so we'll just see what, what happens from now on. Knowing who's on the other side and Aaron Garcia, the legend of the league. Does it bring anything more to the table for you to come in here and try to put a performance on? Uh, you know, uh, Aaron's a great quarterback and I try to compete every time, but wh whoever it is, I'm always going to try to compete and be the best. Appreciate your time, man. Guys? Two California kids, said and Nick, and two great quarterbacks here for the Arizona Rattlers. And last year, Nick Davila led this squad to its first Arena Bowl championship. Set, said Bonner was the QB. Down in New Orleans, the big easy. Well, it was pretty easy, thanks in large part to Davila, the MVP of the game. When the dust settled, it was 72 to 54, the final score in Arena Bowl 25, and the Jim Foster Trophy back here to the Valley of the Sun. Now look at the numbers for Nick Davila there in the Arena Bowl 25. Nine touchdowns, zero interceptions. He got the victory last season in Arena Bowl 25, but even the year prior to that had seven touchdowns, only one interception in the game where we've already showed a few clips that Aaron Garcia got the better when he was with the Jacksonville Sharks. 17 TDs and one pick in two championship games. Here's an onside kick, San Jose pops it up, Reed does a good job of getting it. So it will be Arizona ball after the onside kick. The reason you do this is
strategically is because you're down several possessions now. Only down two touchdowns. If you turn the football over three times at the San Jose Sabercats, you have to find a way, Batesy, to try to steal those possessions back. And the onside kick is one way to do it. It speeds up the clock, if you will. An offense that can't eat as much clock going up and down the field. And, well, it gets a lot harder when it gets tighter down in the red zone. Let's see what the deal in the offense has. Dialed up here. Boy, does it ever work. Picked off by Neal. J.C. Neal brings it out of the end zone. He's hog-tied and thrown down as he crosses the five. There are flags down. And this is a big one if it's going against the Sabercat defense. Boy, do they need to turn the tide here. J.C. Neal undercut this route. Illegal contact, defense. Number six, Captain is the goal. Automatic, first down. But just as he backpedals, into the end zone, he's matched up with Ryan Flinzer, who's a really big target. And it's, ah, I'm a defensive player by nature, so I know I'm a bit biased, but it looked like a clean play to me. There was some contact beyond 10 yards. I think they could have let that one go. I think maybe you let it go if it's one hand, but when you grab both hips with both hands, maybe that's, that's where they got him on it. But to be in that situation, the wide receiver one who initiated the contact. Reed was the motion man, but just a decoy to block for the big man. Odie Armstrong powered his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Arizona. The versatility of the Rattlers fullback, Odie Armstrong. All six foot one, 260 pounds of great blocking on the edge at the point of attack. You see no white jerseys in the frame as Odie Armstrong just goes barely in the end zone. Seventeen rushing touchdowns for Armstrong in 2011. Sixteen touchdowns last year when he was second team all arena. That one rolled back. From Murrieta, from Eisenhart, but it counts as one. Extra point is good nonetheless. Well, we mentioned there will be some awards handed out next week. There will also be a little bit of football played next Saturday at 11.30 p.m. Eastern. The Net 10 Wireless Arena Football Saturday game will be between the Philadelphia Soul and the Iowa Barnstormers from Des Moines, Iowa. Tune in next Saturday at 11.30 on CBS Sports Network. And here's Big Ant's top five quarterbacks as we stand right now. You got Tommy Brady at number three. Is he healthy? Is he healthy enough to belong at number three? That, that's a big question. And coming into this season, he's got he had all the records that he set for single season in NFL history last year. But that right hand, his throwing hand, he does seem to be struggling with that. We just saw J.J. Rattering, America's quarterback, as they call him, in Des Moines, Iowa. They had a big game last week. The big Dobula, without a doubt. And we're seeing it yet again tonight, James, playing at a level like no other quarterback in the league at this point. Well, J.J. Ratterin and the Iowa Barnstormers, we had them on the Net 10 Wireless Arena game last Saturday night. They were 2-0, and matched up against Spokane in the only other undefeated matchup this weekend. And, well, Ratterin and the offense didn't look very good. Only 19 points at halftime in the loss last night to Spokane. So here's Brookins off the net again. Stumbles a little bit. Almost has his hat taken off on the back end of it by Dillon and John Dillon. Well, they would have liked J.C. Neal's interception to count before they came trotting back out. But you need a quick strike here from Garcia and company now. Comparison between the QBs tonight. Nick Davila, he hasn't even had to be on the field that much yet, but the three drives have all led to touchdowns, only six pass attempts. Aaron Garcia, he's got a full game of action here already. We're not even finishing the first half. Remember, Arizona will receive the kickoff to open the second half. And first forward here after the catch, Williams 
by Gray. Five tackles we have unofficially for Gray already here in the first half. The one minute warning, a big old lead for the hometown Rattlers. We'll be right back to wrap up the first half. If you have a tax question, you don't want a tax <clears throat> expert. You want a tax expert. All TurboTax experts are CPAs, EAs, or tax attorneys. Plus, we've got experts to support you all year round. And they're ready now. TurboTax. The age of the oversized luxury car is about to give way to a smarter, more nimble breed. Introducing the all-new Buick Encore. With evolved features like flexible seating for five and IntelliLink. Clearly, the next big thing in luxury is small. Before Allegra, my... Coming up next, our college basketball experts who are on location in Atlanta for the Final Four will give you NCAA March Madness Bracket Breakdown, presented by Buick. Then tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern, our college basketball experts bring the game off the court and into our studio in Atlanta for press conferences, interviews, and the latest Final Four analysis. Watch NCAA March Madness 360, presented by Buick, only on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Well, down to the final minute of this first half, Louisville needing every second of that basketball game, first of the final four, to beat Wichita State. And Whitaker has stopped. Talk to us about these final minutes of each half in arena football. Anthony Heron, please. In the final minutes, you hear the officials announce that the one-minute timing rules are ineffective. So what that essentially means is that now we're more to the outdoor pace of the game. No more running clock. So as you saw that Hugh Whitaker didn't see the football, ran over to the sideline. Once the ball is deep out of bounds, the clock stops. Any incomplete pass, the clock stops. It allows you now to have multiple possessions go back and forth in the final minute. Willis in high motion for Garcia. Stands in there, strong fires, one to Whitaker, who catches it right on the boards. And going out of bounds, will stop the clock here at 47 seconds left. There was glove-like coverage from Jeremy Kellen in the secondary from Arizona. Jason Willis had him one-on-one, -on -one, tried to run a quarter route. They had all kinds of time because the protection was sound, but Kellen had him stride for stride. And again, it really ties in with what you just explained to the viewers about the onside kick. You score here, then you onside kick it. Even if you don't get it, you're going to get another chance probably. Want to get into the end zone first. Trouble. That one was tipped over. Almost the fourth interception of the night for Garcia. And guess who? The future Hall of Famer, Cliff Dukes, getting his big paw on it. Cliff Dukes can hurt you in a number of ways. I didn't list him as a difference maker just because he's a sack artist. Now, you're going to see him there to the field side just work out in what's essentially known as a mirror technique because he wasn't getting heat on the quarterback, just stopped at the line of scrimmage and was able to get his hands up in the window to deflect the ball. Literally putting his dukes up. Look here, see? Third down and short for Garcia. Looks for the big man. Wow, going up to pull it down is Whitaker. Touchdown, Whitaker, as he gets into the end zone. Hugh Whitaker at 6'5", 225 pounds. He can run well enough. He's been an all-arena wide receiver two other times in his career. I keep talking about our Keith Brown undercutting routes, but Aaron Garcia, he couldn't have run out and handed the football to Huey Whitaker any more accurately than he did right there. Here comes the extra point. It's good. And it's 42 to 28. Our Keith Brown and is six foot one. That's a decent size for a quarterback. But when you're six foot five, you know these these receivers, just like the outside game, just like college ball, just like the NFL, have gotten bigger and bigger. Great big targets for these quarterbacks to throw to. Coming up on eight on the Net 10 Wireless halftime show, we're live from the U.S. Airways Center here in Phoenix with more of our Arena Football 101. We'll We'll break down some more rules for you. We'll have last night's news from the games around. Well, 
the Vila and the offense doing their job when they get a chance, but the defense isn't sharing too much tonight. They scored two touchdowns, both on interception returns for touchdowns. The two of the three picks that Garcia has thrown. Another onside coming here. No, they kick it away. Returnable ball here for Gray. Room for Gray. Across midfield. Across the 15. He carries a couple bodies down inside the 10-yard line. Fletcher finally gets him. Back in 2011, Virgil Gray was second team all arena as a defensive back and as a kick returner. They have multiple options in this lineup for people who can take the football off the net. And you need bravery. You need gumption. You need a little charisma to be willing to turn your back to seven angry men covering kicks. And Virgil Gray is one of the better defensive backs in the arena football league. He's got no fear when he takes it off the net. motion, the handoff to Armstrong. Armstrong gets maybe a yard before he's forced backwards by Warren and company. Timeout call with 22 seconds left. We've got the Vila wired. Well, those batteries are going to be fresh for next week. With what little he's used that microphone here tonight. Not much on the offensive side. Should they have kicked that one onside? When you look at what's the clock, I mean, it basically you get the same result because of the long return. If I was San Jose, I would have preferred an onside kick in that scenario because you haven't come up with a stop yet anyway. So you kick it deep, now they have an opportunity to drive the long field, and they can be the last team with the football. If you kick it onside, maybe they have to score quickly, maybe they don't, but you're at least defending in short space. I would have gone onside. Well, our vets team last week in the win over Orlando, they had six onside kicks kicked at them, recovered them all. And the big win. One, two, ready. Along with Seth Bonner and Anthony Harris, I'm James Bates. Glad to have you with us here for the Net 10 Wireless Arena Football Saturday. First half coming to an end. 22 seconds remaining. Flags here and there. One down near the coverage, one up in the offensive line area. The flag that came from the head linesman is going to be on Justin Warren, defensive end out of Texas A&M. Two-time All-Big 12 linebacker started as a true freshman for the Aggies. Back in the secondary, looks like Jay Neal picked up another one for illegal contact. He's, of course, arguing the call. It's so difficult because you've got receivers of this size. But, I mean, across the board for Arizona, they've got skyscrapers. It's like Charles Barkley running a pass route. Two fouls in the play. Illegal formation defense. Lineman coming out of a three-point stance. That penalty's declined. Illegal contact defense. That chip finishes to the goal. Automatic first down. So the situation you find yourself in, James, is as a defensive back. I mean, the case that she Neal is making right now is that these huge wide receivers are running at me. And so now what do I do? When they initiate contact, do I have to give up ground? No. I'm allowed the position as well as they are. What came first, the chicken or the nugget? First down and goal for the offense. The Vila throws it into the stands, and I think I'll take that one home. On up. You have the latitude to do this when you're up two scores at the end of the half here. And, and Seth Bonner, strategically, what are you seeing from down there at field level? They, they just want to waste some clock, burn some clock. They don't want to score and leave any opportunity for San Jose to get a touchdown here. They want to burn some clock and punch it in with no time left. Thirteen ticks remaining here before halftime. Armstrong does a good job of picking up the blitzing Mac. Ball off the boards, but whistled dead as Whitaker pulls it down. And there are flags all over. We've got an injured, an injured back in the corner. 
but after the ball is snapped. You can't have forward progress going until they move the football. Well, in the outside game, that's doing a good job of timing it up. And the offense, unlike the outside game, a receiver is allowed high motion. Arena 101, moments away at halftime, we'll tell you more about the linebackers and the box in this game. There's another flag as Hoots was tangled up with Thomas. Boy, has Lee Van Thomas ever been quiet here tonight after his three interceptions last weekend. This is essentially what Lee Van Thomas is known for. He was one of the first great defensive backs that was able and willing to press the motion. Right there at the line of scrimmage, you've got that wide receiver streaming downhill in high motion. Lee Van Thomas Pass is a defensive back. Defense. Changed the game. Number the nine, the really to the goal. Arizona is elected to take the option of adding time back on the clock. Timer, please reset the clock to nine seconds. That was known as the Doug Plank rule. So currently the Orlando Predators head coach, formerly actually a part of the Arizona Rattlers organization as a defensive coordinator. One of the things Doug Plank would do on defense would just be to continually take penalties over and over again to run time off the clock. Now the Doug Plank rule has been put into place where the offense has the option to put time back on the clock on a defensive foul. San Jose, their second charge timeout of the half, a 30-second timeout. So a timeout call by the Sabercats with nine seconds remaining. And that gentleman right there, Darren Arbett, he and his defense, they have to find a way to get a stop somehow here because two touchdowns down to this squad is enough when you kick off to to start the second half. Three, almost insurmountable. news, scores, and inside information, you go to arenafootball.com. The very latest league standings or stats. Arenafootball.com is where it's at. Any gear you want as well. A lot of action across Arena Football tonight. Two games last night. There'll be no games this weekend on a Sunday. And next week in Iowa. The Hall of Fame inductees like said Bonner. On the ground. On strong. Yes, indeed. What's you're saying, and a rolling ball of butcher knives. Number 32 is just that. Armstrong has been second team all arena multiple times in his career. Especially at this point with Derek Ross and some of the astounding numbers that the Philadelphia Soul fullback has been putting up. But Arizona Rattlers fans, and especially their head coach, Kevin Guy, would make the case that Odie Armstrong is the best fullback in the business. Well, hearing his damage on the ground, remember he had a big 36-yard reception earlier. That is second touchdown run of the night. And the lead is now 21. Here's another look at it. The fourth year back out of Northwest Oklahoma State. When you're operating down in the red zone, you have to create space in the confines of the AFL. You're going to see action looking like it's going in one direction because of the motion. And Odie Armstrong off the toss play, one-on-one, -on -one, right in the hole with the linebacker for the San Jose Sabercats, Wesley Mawia. And Mawia wants nothing to do with that 260 pounds of force. Nick Davila, even on the ground, he's loving it. Well, now we uh, have to do, if, if you may, we don't need to take headphones or anything, but he needs not to get tangled up in the feet of those defensive linemen, even though he's probably rushing the passer through that A-gap. He's got to be able to read that everybody's flat and go adjust and make a tackle there in. That's where the Mac linebacker in the arena game, you're so used to being a pass rusher, snap in and snap out, but then you have to go back to your outdoor mentality there inside the box. So Seth Bonner... 
multiple scores down here for San Jose. What types of adjustments do you potentially see them making moving forward? I think the screen game has been big for them, and they've used it. They've gotten about 9, 10 yards of pop on us. you got to get the ball out of AG's hands early and allow them to get comfortable. They haven't been able to get in a rhythm because of that pressure that that defensive front from the Rattlers have put on them. I love the point that Cedric just made right there because the three-step game and the screen game can be so key. It can still lead to big strikes, but you've got a quarterback who's been under pressure constantly throughout the game so far. Take some pressure off of him. Remember, Mervyn Brookins, deep to receive this one, had a 58-yard return for a touchdown with 20 seconds remaining against Orlando last week. going to happen here though. Time has expired in the first half and San Jose will take it to the halftime locker room looking up at a 21 point deficit and it hasn't even been the Nick Davila show. It's been all about that Rattler defense. Sensational first half of play. But you mentioned it hasn't even been the Nick Davila show. And they really haven't needed them to because the defense has been so opportunistic in the ball game so far, and even in last week's game against Orlando, every one of the defensive backs had an interception. And Cedric Bonner right now is going on the field by Cedric Cats coach Darren Arbett. Hey, coach Arbett, tough start to the game. You guys are able to fight back. What's it going to take for you guys to keep pushing back and getting involved in this game? We just have to take care of the football, get pressure on the quarterback, and just stick together. Up front, it seems like they're getting a lot of push. Are you guys going to change anything up, maybe go slide, or do something different to try to help the front? Yeah, we're going to go talk about that. We're going to give them some different looks, and we just have to be firm up front. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Thanks. Guys. Thanks, Ted. Trailing by 21. Snake bitten a little bit. These Sabercats here in the Snake Pit. Back for the Net 10 Wireless Halftime Show on CBS Sports Network right after this. The average 401k will run out of money seven to eight years into retirement, according to the Employee Benefit Research Institute. Exciting first half of arena football here at the U.S. Airways Center in downtown Phoenix. We welcome you back to the Net 10 Wireless Halftime Show. Hi, everybody. I'm James Fitch. You know, back in the early 1980s, a gentleman by the name of Jim Foster sat at an indoor soccer game sketching on a manila folder. Hmm, some ideas of what would eventually become arena football as we know it today. Obviously, a gentleman who thought outside of the box. But why is it, Anthony Heron, as we go to our Arena 101 for tonight, that most of the rules have to do with staying in the box, restricted to that box? It's a little bit confusing. At the birth of the idea of that box, the interesting thing about it is that the two linebackers who occupied that space were initially known as the Jack and Jill linebackers, but at some point they decided we need a, a little tougher name than that, so they decided to call it the Mac and Jack linebacker. So let's take a quick look at the space that they occupy. The depth of the box is important to note because they can only operate five yards deep. The Mac always lines up to the guard side, the Jack opposite him to the side of the tight end. Now the Jack linebacker, he's allowed to work laterally getting outside the edge blockers and that's where you see him working underneath routes into the passing lane. But the Mac linebacker, that's who's going to flip the majority of the time, allowed to operate in either A gap. So especially in a situation then where there is no one blocking the Mac linebacker, it's going to cause a headache for any quarterback around the arena football league. So the Mac linebacker your blitzer, the jack linebacker usually in pass coverage. The depth of the box, like I mentioned, five yards for each guy, width of the box for the jack, extending sideline to sideline, Mac linebacker bringing headaches towards the middle of an offensive protection, and the jack always to the tight end side. And we use those terms a lot, James, so it's interesting just to allow people a look at what those linebackers do and how they get to operate. Yeah, that definitely was a Mac and not a Jill linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> J.J. Rattlerick and James Bright last it. weekend for you. Now remember, if you see a Jack on a sack, it's just a tackle because the quarterback was outside the box and then all rules are off for halftime when we come back to Phoenix. Try not this uncomfortable.
to show you how. Visit MichaelJFox.org to learn more. CBS Cares. Back here in Phoenix for the Net 10 Wireless Halftime Report. And in the Valley of the Sun, the hometown Arizona Rattlers, the hot team tonight, 49 to 28, our score. Well, off the top of the show, we promised you the two best in arena football going head to head here in this Western Division. Arizona has held up their end of the deal, not just offensively, but defensively as well. They are attacking that football. Without a doubt, and not only on the defensive side of the football, but what Arizona is doing offensively, Nick Dobbin, the way he's playing at quarterback. We've seen it so far this season. We've seen it over the last few years, and there's definitely some other action around the Arena Football League that took place last night, and it's going on tonight as well. Let's take a look at a few of the scores around the AFL. Well, also last night, another undefeated matchup in Spokane taking care of business and proving that this is perhaps the best division in arena football, easily beating Iowa in Iowa. Also last night, it's San Antonio falling to Chicago. Chicago getting their first win. Jacksonville and Philadelphia winners as well. Tampa Bay and Utah just starting right now. Jacksonville's looking pretty good right now as well. And Utah's going to need a big performance tonight. They struggled a bit. Tommy Grady, their quarterback, we referenced it a little while ago. They're going to need a big performance from him to try and prove whether or not he actually is healthy yet. One of the big storylines in the league. Well, Tommy Grady, a guy that you had at third of your top five quarterbacks in the AFL. They've been killing you on Twitter. Give <laughs> Eric Meyer some love. My goodness. And coming into this week, just to note, the list of the top five quarterbacks was through two weeks. And as you mentioned, yes, I've been getting killed on Twitter. 24 touchdowns, zero interceptions for Eric Meyer. If he can stay healthy, he certainly is going to be an MVP candidate. And Tommy Grady, conversely, JB, I mean, he's a guy who we've seen what he can do statistically. But so far this season, six interceptions off to a very slow start after a record-setting season last year. So another big game that's taking place tonight is Doug Plank getting to face his old team. He led the Philadelphia Soul to the Arena Bowl last season. And after an Arena Bowl 25 appearance, he's coaching the Orlando Predators tonight against that Philadelphia Soul squad. So certainly people are intrigued by what Doug Plank is going to be able to do against his old outfit. Well, Plank and the Preds move to 0-3. They lose a tough one to Philly, who balances out their score after the bye. Remember, they lost here in Week 1. We'll be right back. you back to the U.S. Airways Center in Phoenix, getting set for the second half. There are your first half stats, and three turnovers, 21 points, the result forced by that Arizona defense. An extremely opportunistic Arizona Rattlers defense. They've got ball hawks throughout the entire secondary. People with accolades around the back end, Arkeith Brown, Virgil Gray, Marquis Floyd, Jeremy Kellen. These are guys who are playmakers and could be the headliner in most of the secondaries around the AFL is every guy been able to bring them all together on the same team. Well, back at the hotel, getting ready for tonight's matchup between these two bitter rivals. The three-way tie for first place in the Western Division was watching the lead-in to the Final Four on CBS. It was a great job by so many greats throughout the years in college basketball. Bill Walton comes on and says, champions, they don't wait for their opponents to make a mistake. They attack, and that is just what this team, coached by a coach guy, has done. He's with Cedric right now. Coach, talk about the efficiency of your offense and defense all around. What are your thoughts on that first half? Well, our defense made some big plays that gave us a little kickstart there, and offensively we've been real efficient. So uh, we just got to keep it up, keep our foot on the gas pedal. We expect them to all-time kick a lot in the second half, so we got to be dialed in on our special team. Guys? All right, thank you, Sid. Coach Kevin Guy. 
will send his defense out. San Jose not electing to onside kick. The first try of the second half, and here comes Nick Davila. to signal when he got to the line of scrimmage it's because he was excited they had a screen pass called T shoot F up tight end went up the seam the fullback Odie Armstrong got the football out in space and went to work Extra point is good, and just like that, it's 56 to 28. If that's what happens when this Rattler offense is not all on the same page, <laughs> oh my goodness, watch out, AFL. As Odie Armstrong gets the football, you see all the black jerseys. They're out in space. They're trying to knock down the defenders from the Sabercats. Lee Van Thomas can't get big Odie Armstrong knocked down before he crosses the goal line. And you look at the big fellas out in space, the big uglies of the Rattlers. Trying to put people on the ground and Odie Armstrong. Rumble, young man, rumble. Well, Cedric Bonner had a great view of that one, and here he is with Armstrong. Hop 50 T, hop 50 T escape. Get you the ball in the shoot. You're approaching over 60 yards of reception. Did you feel that coming in tonight? Well, we know the game plan, how they like to rush. And it's been a great play calling all night. Great blocking by the teammates, and it's all been wide open tonight. Have the guys up front been helping you out as far as running the ball? Do you appreciate having that, those big linemen up front? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. We got big physical guys, and uh, they open up the holes for me, pretty much walking in every time. There it is. Thanks, so That's the playmaker, man. The old specialist now. <laughs> he said at 265 pounds, it, he did a good job of, of conducting that interview there. You know, it, usually guys are out of breath, even the little guys have to run him that far. He was breathing hard, but he was disguising it very well. I know how he did it. He was disguising it very well. It was like one of those Olympic track interviews. <laughs> You know, the track star, 265 pounds, Odie Armstrong here tonight, off the net and off and running. No whistle yet, finally down to cross midfield is Brookings. Well, for the Rattlers, it's been Odie, Odie, all come free. Through the air, 36 yards back in the first half. And a nice stiff arm at the end and then followed up by two rushing touchdowns. This just shows you the full arsenal that is Odie Armstrong because these are the fun plays to look at, but he still does the dirty work. He still is willing to sit in there and pass protection, take that Mac linebacker on, snap in and snap out, and that's why Nick Domino looks so cool. I told him to stop carrying the game. Garcia is hit as he throws, and a great job by Gray. Gray coming back underneath it to knock it down. Intended target was Willis. There is a flag, maybe a late hit coming up against Garcia. Personal foul, roughing the passer, 77 defense. 10-yard penalty, automatic, first down. That is the nose guard, one of the best in the business, and Taz Hawthorne. He was an All-American for the Wisconsin Badgers. He was able to bring some pressure right there in the middle of the pocket. So from the nose position, as he spins off that block, ball leaves QB's hands. Picks him up and puts him down, doesn't he? Here's Willis. He's hit hard. And it's a helmet to helmet as he was tied up. Great comes. 
down low. And another defensive back up high, and that one to the head, so it will be a penalty on back-to-back -back plays by Arizona. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 19, defense. Hit above the shoulder. After this is a goal, automatic first down. The difficult thing about this call on Marquise Floyd, because Murphy Gray has the receiver wrapped up, it is a violent looking hit, especially when you beat play it, you look at it in slow motion. You want to see the defensive back come in with his eyes up. Come in seeing what he's hitting. That's where the players end up getting pretty dangerous, but I don't believe it's a cheap shot at 10th and Quick throw, but it's tipped. And trouble there. Wisely, Whitaker just batting it down to buy another play. And guess who? Marcus Pittman got his big mitt on it. We saw Pittman do plenty of this in the opener. Just as he works up field, he's going to stall his feet because he knows he's got an opportunity to get his hands on the football. You want to talk about big people getting balls out in space and going to the paint. Marcus Pittman did that in the season opener. And a very well-coached defensive front for Arizona. They do all the disaster, of them, and if they don't get to the quarterback, an excellent job with the mirror technique of getting the hands up. Here's Garcia to Willis. Touchdown. Second touchdown catch of the night for Willis. He's got some talking to do. They better do some scoring first. It's just 56 to 34 now. This one takes a little bit of patience as it develops for Jason Willis. He'll work towards the front pylons, and Marco Simmons just runs off the coverage. As he runs it off, Jason Willis is left open in front of the end zone. Extra point is good. It's 56 to 35. Lead back down to 21. Well, some talk for Gray after this touchdown catch, but a 21-point lead by Arizona has Gray saying, what are you talking about, Willis? Net 10 Wireless hit of the game. It's Cliff Dukes, who played the stud end position as a 258-pound defensive end at Michigan State. He weighs 290 now, and he's still a stud. He's got your Net 10 Wireless hit of the game. I felt that one, JB, and I did not like it. That was about a 6.9 on the Richter scale, just laying heavy on a QB. Made Garcia look like a rag doll there. <laughs> just folded him up like a piece of paper underneath them. And we could have taken a few plays to make them our hit of the game, and a lot of them coming from that defensive front, who has been phenomenal, putting the pressure on a great quarterback in Garcia tonight. Here's Gray off the net. Gray gets a nice block from Pittman, and a flag is thrown. Kellum on the hole rather, thought he had a nice block to spring him, but he was peeking over his shoulder the whole time because he knew that he was guilty of a hold. This one's coming back. During return holding on the receiving team, number 20. Bentley staff did it to the goal. First down, Arizona. That was great. He was all Atlantic 10 coming out of college before he was ever all arena. He's an angle leader with the kind of speed that he has. Defenders think they have an opportunity in coverage, and he just hits another gear. Just see Kellum there at the bottom of the screen looking back with me, like clapping, yeah, like, yeah, they got me. Just more time for the offense to work here. Here comes the lefty. The Vila comes out firing to Windsor. Good to see Windsor back out there. He was banged up late in the first half. Let's see if we can listen in hear this conversation. there on that one. Looking for Windsor. J.C. Neal was right there in his hip pocket. 
Wheeler, a big hit on Nick Davila. This is the type of pressure that could potentially change the game for this Sabercats defense. You're going to see it coming right in your homes. Four, five, five. All morning. Davila, after that, it says, forget fishing. Let's get back to football plays. Read in motion. There's a flag, not the one near the intended receiver, Windsor. There was contact over here, the near side boards. Leading from the defense. Number 13, five yard penalty, automatic. First down. So they call it on Mervyn Brookings. He was working toward the boundary side of the field covering Tyson Boots. Boots has been battling an ankle injury. There's a matchup that takes place in right there. Rides him into the wall and Boots actually just steps on the wall as he's heading up the boards. Just had to leave the lineup a moment ago. Carry in high motion. Time for Garcia. Fires it to Reed. And a gain of about seven yards. It'll be second and three. Here's Nick and Coach Guy. Okay, here we go. Let's go. Punt left. Z short. Post line. There we go. Five seconds. Next left. Z short. Eight slice. On two. Ready. Slice route counts that inside receiver is going to work a dig. Well, too short. Looking for Perry. They're coming, coach. All right, here we go. Let's go. Right, Z right. right. Yeah, Z zoom. Follow one. Here we go. Here we go. Three steps. Right. Z zoom. Follow one. On to the next. And there's the play call on what is the first third down of the game for this offense. Looking for Reed. Good covered by Neal. No flags. Hometown fans want one, but won't get one. Oh, check that. That's Cleveland Thomas. Cleveland Thomas has been known for this over the years. He's got no fear about putting his hands on wide receivers, not just at the line of scrimmage, but if you want to jostle, Cleveland Thomas says, I'm your Huffleberry, and jostling is just my game. You just went Doc Holliday, tombstone on him. <laughs> hey, hey, said Bonner, Law don't, Law don't go around here, Law Dog. You're my friend, Doc. <laughs> He's quoting tombstone up here, said. <laughs> hey, that's what happens. Hey, there's ice underneath the turf, guys. So a lot of guys are coming up with some hammy issues. It's a little humid in here, not normal for Arizona. Oh, no problem there, said Jerry Perry almost makes it into the paint. It's now now the first down and goal. Perry still finding his way in this Rattlers offense. And route running early in his career, especially last season as a rookie with the Chicago Rush, struggled with that at times. An extremely explosive athlete is Jerry Perry. Ran a 4-4 at the NFL Combine. The freshman All-American for the Missouri Tigers. As we mentioned earlier, last season, the AFL Rookie of the Year. Extremely explosive ability in those legs. Well, Disney on ice, not the Phoenix Coyotes. The reason for the ice underneath the turf here that said mentioned, the Coyotes used to play here in the U.S. Airways Center, but they've moved out to Glendale, where the Phoenix Cardinals play. Five-yard penalty remains first down. We've seen a couple of those things where Jared Perry, I mentioned the explosive ability that he possesses, but as a young football player, you still see some of those inconsistencies, kind of the perfect imperfections of a young and talented football player. Remember there was a moment earlier in the game, took his eyes off the football before he pulled in the catch, where he had an easy touchdown coming up. Garcia stands in there strong. He's taken down. Here comes a flag late near the carnage that has the Vila 
And a couple saber tooths in it. Holding offense, number 75, that penalty's declined. Second down. There's a couple of talented pass rushers who come off the edge for the Saber cast. And Cornelius Dixon, he's starting to have a hard time with Justin Warren. Just got that inside pad dipped, working right into the back of Nick Davila. Justin Warren started linebacker, the true freshman for Texas A&M. As I mentioned earlier, all Big 12 a couple of times in his career. Spent some time in the NFL. Very gifted athlete. Now in his fourth year here in the AFL. Well, good job here to come fighting back for that one, just to knock it down by a big Rod Windsor, the 6'2", 220-pound receiver. Obviously, even in the outside game, things get constricted. It's tougher to score in the red zone. Not as many options. It's multiplied times, what, 10 when you're inside here in the arena game? At least by 10. Especially when you consider the fact that the ball leaves the hands of the quarterback so quickly. And the end zone, only 8 yards deep. And these sidewalls, these boards, both in the front and on the side, act as additional defenders. You'll see certain arenas where the end zones are even rounded, confining the spaces even more. Well, and even better is the defense by J.C. Neal. A good no call there because Neal was right on Windsor and reaches in and pokes it away for the incompletion. Quick stop route here for Rod Windsor. And this is the call that J.C. Neal has been waiting for because it was a no call. Rod Windsor runs up to the five-yard line, just barely engages J.C. Neal. Neal takes on the contact, doesn't do anything illegal, so no flag comes. J.C. Neal, out of NC State, something South Carolina product. So here's a field goal attempt from 25 yards out and it is good for Lindholm. Well, first field goal attempt is a good one for the Rattlers, 59-35. It is not back-to-back -back weeks that we have Jace Robertson of Duck Dynasty in the house. We be sure to catch Universal Pictures Fast and Furious in theaters May 24th coming at you. It, it, was, it was close, the beer to Duck Dynasty. But you know, here, note to self, if you ever become a hard grizzled biker, don't eat pretzel bits in public. <laughs> this little muffin he was eating. We got to fix the street crowd a bit. Yeah. Lindholm to boot it away. Lindholm, one of the better tacklers from that kicker position in the league. He may need to help out a little bit here. Brookings is dangerous. There is a flag down. You know, and think about it. You knock over his motorcycle. Hey, you're lucky I'm trying to finish these Wetzel bits or I come out and work you. <laughs> Whoa, look at that. Beard's all over. And we've got another beard. The commissioner, Mr. Kurz, when we come back. Before Allegra, my allergies kept me from enjoying Kate's big moments. After Allegra, that all changed. The power of Allegra relieves your toughest symptoms on the toughest days. Only Allegra is both fast and non-drowsy. Stop suffering. Start living. Available at Walmart. We're marching through the Final Four and breaking down the matchups. You're getting ready to play on the biggest stage of your life in front of all of America that's watching. When you think about teams coming from unexpected places to advance in the NCAA tournament, they have to be able to win close games. It's money time now. It's all business. You know what I want to be when I grow up? 
I want to be a 12 suit. <laughs> I'm serious. Don't miss NCAA March Madness Bracket Breakdown, presented by Buick, tonight at 11.30, only on CBS Sports Network. PBR Built Ford Top Series, Sunday at 8, only on CBS Sports Network. The average 401k will run out of money seven to eight years in retirement, according to the Employee Benefit Research Institute in Washington, D.C. Tax increases or another severe market drop could wipe out your savings even faster. Millions of Americans are going to run out of money right when they need it most. When they're no longer earning an income, you don't have to be one of them. We have a free video that shows how the wealthiest people in America create tax-free lifetime retirement income without ever losing a penny in the stock market, and how you can too. Call now for this free video. You'll also receive a free analysis of this retirement vehicle tailored specifically to your needs and a free comparison to your current plan. If you're 25 or older and don't yet have a plan, you need to start one now. Don't wait until it's too late. Call now for your complimentary video, analysis, and comparison. There's no obligation, so you have nothing to lose. Call now. Welcome back to the Snake Pit, where the Rattlers have a commanding 59-35 lead here with Commissioner Jerry Kurz. And Commissioner, talk about today's important opening voting days of the Net 10 Wireless Dream Team. It's something that our fans really look forward to as we do, and Net 10 Wireless again has the Dream Team, and voting started today. And we really want people to be a part of this. Go to the website, arenafootball.com, and select the participants for Net 10 Wireless Dream Team. And next weekend we have some kind of thing going on. I don't know what it is or why it's important, but it's something going on in Iowa. Tell us what's happening next weekend in Iowa. It's our Hall of Fame induction, something very important to our fans, to our players, to our coaches, to our owners uh, in Iowa, where it should be, where Jim Foster is going to be there as well. This guy also gets in the Hall of Fame this year, Randy Gatewood. We're going to have a great time. Guys, well, Cedric, you'll this time next week be rocking a great big rock on your right hand in the arena. Football Hall of Fame ring coming your way and well deserved. The greatest quarterback to ever play, the winningest quarterback in the history of the Arena Football League, down there with the microphone in his hand, the third member of our crew. Here is the 2012 AFL Hall of Fame induction class. It will be honored in Des Moines, Iowa next Saturday night. And we'll have that game for you on CBS Sports Network on the Net 10 Wireless Arena Football Saturday. How about that list of names? Severus Bonner voted the greatest quarterback in AFL history by the Silver Anniversary Committee. Coach Mike Daly, two Arena Bowl championships. One of those coming with the Albany Firebirds. Next one with the Colorado Crush. And then the list goes on from there. Randy Gate was one of the great Iron Men in the history of the AFL. Coach Mike Coenci still at it right now, third all time in the AFL in career victories as a head coach. He'll be on the field coaching against the Philadelphia Soul. Where Clint Dozell is going into the Hall of Fame as a quarterback. He now the head coach of the Soul. And Coach William Nero, who people don't know, we're looking at Commissioner Kerr's right there himself. William Nero and Jim Foster got together and started the Arena Football League back in 1987. It's been great ever since. Willis is thrown down. There was no whistle finally coming in. And calling the ball down to Taya. So it will remain with San Jose. But was Jason Willis laying on a body? Or he actually... Oh, that was close. That was close. Bridget Gray comes in, secures the tackle. They got, oh, did they get a playoff? Apparently not. Kevin Guy is holding the red flag. Floyd was jumping up and down all the way up until the ball was snapped, trying to get his coach's attention. Guy finally listening to him. Prior to the snap, Arizona is challenging the play, ruling the runner down. The play is under review. You called it up here, too. Was he ever down on the turf? And here, 
Coach Kevin Guy wants to review it, and as Dave Kataya walks over to the monitor, we'll listen in for our Net 10 wireless call to the booth. What, what I'm looking for is the runner down and the ball coming out prior to the runner being down. We've got a free strain now. He's going forward. He's got the ball. Got the ball. He's on a player. Ball turns away. Nothing from that. Can you give me a reverse angle? Gonna get a, that's going to be stand so far. Give me another angle because I can't see that knee whether it's down or not. We're looking for the ball coming out before the runner being down. Is this your last angle? All right, we're going to go with stands because I can't see the play all the way through. Okay. All right, go ahead, roll it. Got it. He's on a player right now. All right, roll that one back for me again. What we're looking for to see if he's on a player, if he's on the ground. I can't see the knee on that. All right, we're going to go with stands. So that's your Net 10 wireless call to the booth. Kataya talking it over. Throwing on the field stands. There is no video evidence to show the knee. Arizona is charged with a timeout and a challenge. The conversation, the end, you didn't hear was to our truck, our producer team man, Mark Titleman. And, well, he saw something. You saw it too, and you weren't the only one wiggling around saying, wait a minute, look at this. And I certainly feel that you can see the ball coming out. Dave Katai is not in a position to assume that the knee is down. I did anticipate from that aerial angle, though, that they were going to have enough to overturn the call. Dave Katai did not believe it was. That is an interesting lens to see the replay through. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, hands to the face, number 77 offense. Ten yard penalty, repeat, first down. There's nowhere else in professional sports where you actually get to hear the internal monologue turn into an external monologue for the official. And here on the flag that was just called, hands to the face right there as the defender making an inside move. Devin Clark. Gets up into the face mask of the pass rusher. And a bit of an adventure for Devin Clark playing his first game back. He's played in the last two arena bowls with different teams. He's faced injuries both years. Going back to get that one. Good job by Simmons, who has a touchdown catch in this game. It'll be third down and short coming up. If you're going to be a successful quarterback in the Arena Football League, you have to be able to throw off platform. There's maybe no one in the history of the game who's done that as well as Aaron Garcia. Because he, he's a more diminutive guy. He's really about six foot, six one on a really good day. So you have to work to find your own window. Tried to find one there, and it was swallowed up in a hurry by the defense, forcing Garcia to double pump. Throws it behind. Willis incomplete. One minute just about remaining in the third quarter. for two on fourth down tonight. The Sabercats, two interceptions thrown on fourth down for this offense. This time it's just incomplete as it makes its way up to the railing in the stands. Turnover on downs for this Arizona Rattler defense. Boy, they have attacked from the very beginning here in the snake pit tonight. 59 to 35, our score late in the third. Hi, I'm Kyle Chandler. 
When a high school football player suffers a catastrophic spinal cord injury, Eddie and Chris Canales and the Gridiron Heroes step in to support this injured athlete and his family financially and emotionally. They help keep the lights on, keep food on the table, and they provide wheelchairs and wheelchair accessible vehicles. I'm Eddie Canales, and this is my son Chris. Please log on to gridironheroes.org to find out more about Gridiron Heroes and how you can help support. So please join us in supporting the Gridiron Arena football fans, grab the hottest officially licensed Arena Football League team gear from shop.arenafootball.com. Look like a true fan by heading to shop.arenafootball.com for hundreds of authentic AFL team items. Get the best customer service, 365-day hassle-free returns, and flat rate shipping on any size order. All at the official online store of the Arena Football League at shop.arenafootball.com. Hot water means working hard in the classroom and on the field, never giving up, following your dreams. Just a few of the values over 400,000 children learn every day in Pop Warner football, cheer, and dance. 70% of all NFL players play Pop Warner. Pop Warner means tomorrow's NFL stars. Pop Warner, your future begins here. Yes, no filler, no balance, just full throttle rock and roll. Monster, the brand new album from Kiss, featuring Hell or Hallelujah. Monster from Kiss, available now. Back here on the Net 10 Wireless Arena Football Saturday in Phoenix are out of town scores in week three. We had two games yesterday, and the Shock stay undefeated on the road in Iowa against a then 2 0 Iowa Barnstormer team. How about Chicago getting their first win? It's about time for the Chicago Reds to get one on the board. Jacksonville moving to 3 0 today. Oh, Brookings was back. And he was stuck. Reed was into that comfort zone where you need to have been turned two steps prior. Got lucky there. Gary Reed went to fourth gear. He could have just gotten to fifth gear. Would have had an opportunity at that ball. And we just showed some of the sports from around the league. And you folks at home, you can see the hashtag AFL on CBS. I am getting murdered on Twitter because I didn't have Eric Meyer in my top five quarterbacks. We're taking it inside the Velvet Rope, folks. My top five was submitted about two days ago. Ah, uh, don't worry about it. You guys can maybe use an update. <laughs> we'll see. He's a big guy. He can take it. We'll be back from the fourth quarter of 59-35. It's been all rattlers here in the snake pit so far tonight. <laughs> When buying a car, there is one essential question. What should I pay? The problem is that pricing information is everywhere and from more sources than you can possibly study. That's why True Car collects it and analyzes all of it so you can recognize a fair price. Then True Car partnered with thousands of trusted dealers that offer guaranteed savings without negotiation. So when buying a car, get guaranteed savings. Visit TrueCar.com. Fires can get out of control quickly, but fire extinguishers can cause an even bigger mess. Not anymore. Introducing Knockout 360, the best way to stop a fire quickly and mess-free. If you had a fire in your kitchen, would you know what to do? For a grease fire, do you use water or baking soda? Traditional fire extinguishers put out fires with toxic chemicals that you don't want anywhere near your kitchen. Knockout 360 puts out grease fires, oil fires, gas fires, and all other common types of fires immediately with no odor 
no harmful residue, and no guessing. With any fire, simply grab Knockout 360 and spray. There's no need to shake the can, no need for annual maintenance, and Knockout 360 is reusable up to 12 times, unlike traditional fire extinguishers that are single-use. Patented Knockout 360 uses a unique technology to remove the heat from fires, so it's cool to the touch right away. And without the big mess from other fire extinguishers that cover the fire with chemicals or powders. With a three-year shelf life, you can be confident Knockout 360 will be ready when you need it. And it's made from top quality materials from right here in the USA. But don't take our word for it. Listen to our customers' reviews. I was amazed at how easy it was to use. And I put a fire out on my stove without a big mess. You never know when you'll need it with all the house fires in the news. Protect your home, your family, and your valuables today with Knockout 360. Thousands have been sold for $20 or more. But order today and we'll send you not one, but two cans of Knockout 360 for the amazing low price of just $10. If you're not completely satisfied, send them back for a full refund of the purchase price. This offer is not available in stores. You've got to call now. Here's how to order. Call now to get the Knockout 360 double offer for just $10. Call one 287 1474 or log on to nofirenomess.com. Call or log on today. Hey, how about it tonight's Net 10 Wireless fans of the game? These fans will receive prize packs courtesy of Net 10 Wireless. And it's the Carl Hayden High School ROTC there. We don't stop there. We're giving them all kinds of shirts and rattlers. Oh, wait, ra rattlers. Now, rattlers. That's been on me because I've been saying rattlers. The guy from the South should get it right, right? Rattlers. You've been putting about five syllables in the, the uh, word rattlers. Just trying to take a little bit of the pressure off me. You're getting from the air fryer. Man, I'm stuck beating up on me. Those goal line bandits and all the Spokane Shock fans, they're extremely excited about the 3-0 start, and they should be. Three games on the road, all of them around the Midwest region of the country. I mean, this West division, we've talked about it several times over the last couple of weeks here. You look at the Arizona Rattlers, you look at the Spokane Shock, you look at the Utah Blaze anticipating they will continue to improve, and of course these San Jose Sabercats, although they're being bested by the best team in the Arena Football League right now, but the Sabercats, I believe, are going to be right there in the hunt as we get to the ender to the end of the season. Offside defense. That was about a three minute conference and we got offside defense. Okay. Offside defense okay. number 20. Ah, okay. That is his second foul. Five yard penalty. First down. As we saw those scores before we went to break from last night, Chicago getting their first win over San Antonio, 48 to 41. Now remember, the last time they started 0-2, they ended up winning at all the Arena Bowl championship in 2006, Arena Bowl 20. So there's a lot of football to be played there on the 50-yard war on the floor. But the Rattlers, after all, are the defending champs. I hope Seth approves of that one. Right, here we go. Here we he go. should. That was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Big move. Okay. Cool. Come on. Now, five steps. Left. Z move. Four, five, five. All the way. Come on. 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 Looking for Reed and connecting to Vila. So it will be a first down at the 25-yard line, midfield in the AFL. continue to see the high motion wide receiver week in and week out. But remember folks, there's only one wide receiver allowed in high motion on any particular snap and it can be moving forward, backward, laterally, 
And of course, the cadence is so important, especially with the way the Arizona Rattlers do their motion. You heard the moon motion a moment ago, where sometimes you're working back, sometimes you're working all the way across the formation. But right there at the snap, the QB and the wide receiver have to be in sync with the cadence. Well, here comes number one, Windsor, into your screen. And this time, they'll stop play as flags come down. Prior to snap, offside defense, number 54. Unabated the quarterback. That was in the, in the bonus. That's a five-yard penalty and a first down. But just picture it, if you will. The line of scrimmage, if there was just a barricade going all the way across, and as that wide receiver comes in high motion, he's got to make sure he times it up perfectly. The quarterback sees him out of his periphery, and believe it or not, folks, he is not offside as you see it right here. They've begun to emphasize this on the offensive players even more so in recent years than they did in the past. There was a point in the AFL where you let a wide receiver get three, four steps downfield, and some officials wouldn't even call it as though it's not enough of an advantage for the offense that he's allowed in that high motion. They wouldn't even call him offsides half the time. Well, slow to get up is Brookings. Except Bonner took advantage of that as well as anyone ever has. Said that high motion, how do you time it up so well? Uh, you just, you want to get that little extra step, and it's just knowing your guys, if you can see them out of your periphery, periphery as you can say, then you know you're good to go, and, and I used to try to let them get two yards. I know you said three yards, but <laughs> two is enough. Three was way too much, Anthony. And we'll keep that involved here because a quarterback like Nick Gavila, we keep talking about the level that he's playing at, and there's new talent here on the outside that the Arizona Rattlers quarterback has been working with. Well, here Perry had a couple shakes before he got to the line. There's a few more of these Tooker flags, the AFL flag sponsor on the ground at this point. Fortunate defense on the nose guard. San Jose's in the bonus. That's five-yard penalty and an automatic first down. Well, so from here on out, they shoot two. <laughs> you know, and, and now that is where the rule has changed. It was parry in motion, but with a couple of the shakes, a couple moves before he got to the line, that's one thing they took out of the game, and perhaps they're trying to time it up, the nose guard and Stewart, with the motion man, which if you think about it, you're rushing, you play the defensive line, are you peeking out of the corner of your eye at that high motion man trying to get a jump defensively? Without a doubt, you're attempting to time that motion up so you can get the best jump off the snap. Firing one back shoulder, Davila to Reed, the big strong body receiver, fights off the defender and goes back and gets it with one hand. Mac linebacker is out of the defensive box. That penalty declined. Touchdown. Big Davila went from being a junior college All-American to being a starter for the Cincinnati Bearcats. And now he's had success in the Arena Football League for a number of years at the AF2 rank, winning Arena Cup Championships with the Spokane Sock. Now, an Arena Bowl MVP, and we see him on a path right now, cementing himself against a guy who, he may not call him his idol, but another Latin quarterback in the AFL and Aaron Garcia, who's accomplished so much, and Nick Dobbin now supplanting Aaron Garcia as the number one QB in the AFL. Extra point is good, and it's 66 on the board with a lot of ball left to be played. It's wide receiver Kerry Reed, not Jerry Reed, but Arizona is loaded up and trucking. Before Allegra, my allergies kept me from enjoying Kate's big moments. After Allegra, that all changed. The power of Allegra relieves your toughest symptoms on the toughest days. Only Allegra is both fast and non-drowsy. Stop suffering. Start living. Available at Walmart. We're marching through the Final Four and breaking down the matchups. You're getting ready to play on the biggest stage of your life in front of all of America that's watching. When you think about teams coming from unexpected places to advance in the NCAA tournament, they have to be able to win close games. It's money time now. It's all business. You know what I want to be when I grow up? Network. 
welcome back to the Snake Pit where the Rattlers hold a 65 to 39 lead. Talking about the Tucker flag and the partnership that was developed this year. You see these commemorative flags. They show the date and the game. These go on auction immediately following the game. So log on to Arena Football and find out how you can get yours. Guys? All right, Sam. Immediately after the game, that's going on auction. Don't pocket it. Well, I'm wondering if, if Cedric Bonner, did he swipe that flag from one of the officials? I mean, how do you really get your hands on a Tucker flag? And I'm assuming he's not logged into ArenaFootball.com right now. I wonder where he got that from. Oh, well, now he's empty-handed. Apparently, the official came and swiped it back. All right. Well, uh, Seth Bonner, big, big night for him tonight. Hard to get any work done down there. Everybody wanted to come pat you on the back. Won so many games for the hometown team. Three the bowl championships. Inducted to the Hall of Fame, as we mentioned, next weekend. Oh, off the tight part of the net and flying down there to cover is Marquise Floyd. He started the scoring in this one with an interception return for a touchdown. Almost gets it back to Arizona. Now, Arena Football Hall of Fame next week for Seth, but it's not the only Hall of Fame that he is a member of. Back in 1998, Dow State Northridge, well, they have been one of the greatest to ever play, not just football, but get this, also lettering in basketball, volleyball, and track and field as well. No, that's not Reggie Miller. That's just a young <laughs> set honor. Look at it. Wait a minute. Did you say volleyball? <laughs> yes, volleyball. Hey, that just shows my athleticism, Anthony. Don't be jealous, man. Okay? <laughs> just because you just got to do the fat man relays at the track meet. Relax. <laughs> Relax. Here, I've got, I've got my notes on you, Seth. He was the outside hitter for the men's volleyball team in the 1991 season, and he took first place in the high jump three times. There was a point where those knees could handle a high jump? Yeah. Well, I didn't have 245 pounds. I had about 195, 200 pounds to go over the bar. It wasn't that heavy. <laughs> 165 soaking wet. There is no way I'm looking at those pictures thinking even 195. Well, that was my senior year. My freshman year, I was 6 feet 1, 159 pounds. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and my nickname was Manute Bowl because I was so skinny. Oh. I believe it. Oh, sad. Sad. He's showing us the ropes. Where the good fiddles were in Arizona last night. And here's Simmons. Simmons a nice run after a catch, fighting hard, diving inside the 10-yard line. You see the Sabercats going into more of a hurry-up mode now. They're down 31 points, trying to do everything they can to see how many possessions they can rack up throughout this fourth quarter. If they score, onside kicks will most certainly make sense. Looking for Willis. Willis with two touchdown catches tonight. That makes 77 times that Willis and his quarterback, Aaron Garcia, in their AFL careers have combined for touchdowns. Illegal contact number 20, defense. Half the dish of the goal, automatic. First down. Big Ann, how old were you in 1990 when Seth was doing all his damage there for Cal State Northwood? Let's go with 11. 11 years old. So here's a first down and goal now for the Sabercats. Looking Willis's way again. And good coverage. three interceptions on the night, all of those in the first half for Aaron Garcia, but he's going to have to take some chances here throughout the fourth quarter. Who knows? It may lead to another interception, but if there's any opportunity for the San Jose Sabercats to get back in this game, they have to score. they got to score fast. Here's Simmons, this time with the handoff. Well, said your old team, these Arizona Rattlers, they have really played some outstanding defense here tonight. I'm telling you, a dominant, dominant defense, and inside the red zone, they make it tough, and it's where Aaron's had some struggles over the years, and, and that's why people tend to onside kick him, get him down this red zone and make it tough for him to find the throwing lanes, tough for him to find his receivers with these giant defensive ends. It's a good point. Wolfers back at the fullback spot to block his ball and fly. 
almost intercepted and knocked away at the last second. Wow. Did Brown ever pay the price? He had his hands on it for just a moment. Immediately was smacked during the ball. Just watch this. As Marco Simmons was an All-American as a wide receiver at Western Michigan, but he's going to look like an All-American safety right now. He made sure that no one in the Arizona secondary had an opportunity to catch that football off the net. I beg your pardon, it was Floyd who took that shot. So another shot, but it's fourth down for Garcia and company. Floating that one over the middle to Simmons, his second touchdown, catch of the ninth. I've talked repeatedly about the comfort level between Aaron Garcia and Jason Willis. But Jamarco Simmons was on the championship team in Arena Bowl 24 when Aaron Garcia finally got his title. Jason Willis, interestingly enough, was not. He was in Pittsburgh that year. So electing here to throw it for two and almost taken back the other way. Garcia again takes another shot as he lets that one go. Jamarco Simmons, his head coach Darren Arbett, says he practices so hard I wish I had a hundred of them. Well he's got seven points, or six rather, from this guy right there. Talk with them, not at them. CBS Sports. Get more. AFL fans, this season culminates with the ultimate prize, the Arena Bowl 26 in Orlando, Florida, on Saturday, August 17th. The Arena Bowl 26 will be broadcast live on CBS, leading into the third round coverage of the BGA Championship. If you want tickets, Ticketmaster.com is the place to go. Garcia and Davila here tonight. The last two Arena Bowl MVPs. Garcia with Jacksonville two years ago. There's your onside kick and a good job to pluck this one and go down to the turf. Brown. Marquise Brown. Is it a hockey puck or a can of dip wrapped up in that flag? Those special flags are given away. It's, I hope it's not a hockey puck. That'd do some serious damage if thrown near the puck. That's a valid question. We'll have to ask Mr. Tuchel. Illegal block below the waist on the receiving team. That's a 10-yard penalty. First down. Maybe it's a, a sweet hockey puck. Seven thirty-seven left in this one. Here's another look at that onside kick. You're not allowed to block low in these situations. There's a lot of variations for how you can do the onside kick. The high hop, the dribbler, as you just saw right there. If he comes up and cuts on an eight, here we go. Left up, bicep. Left up, X zoom. One, one, one. All one. Yeah. Big Rod Windsor, the high motion man. The lefty looking for him. Just like that. Touchdown. They go right at Cleveland Thomas for six more. So Cleveland Thomas ran with him, but he didn't really impede the progress of Rod Windsor as he approached the line of scrimmage. And if Windsor works his way into the secondary and gets those long strides going, Big Davila most certainly knows what to do with it. He puts the football on the money. It's one of the most dangerous weapons in the Arena Football League. Well, Clee Van Thomas, who turns 34 years old today. He's not 42 like Garcia, but he's getting up there. You know what? It's, 
it's a lot of football to stand out there and jam somebody at the line, especially these big receivers we see in the AFL right now. Guys like Rod Windsor. It's another touchdown. How about the 73 so far with 641 left? If you have a tax question, Marching through the final four and breaking down the matchups. You're getting ready to play it. Brought to you by Net 10 Wireless. No contract wireless on America's best networks. This is what you do downtown Saturday night in Phoenix. Well, young man getting busy. <laughs> If you've got a kid that likes to dance, bring them and their friends to the arena football game closest to you on a weekend. Guaranteed good time for everybody. Kids that enjoy to dance and, and kids that enjoy taking their shirts off. Last week we had a whole group of kids about that age, yeah. 12 years old, shirtless. Showing some of the best James Bates dance party moves. You got up in Boogie. Yeah. Don't I act had, like you when I was his age, I had the Alfonso Rivero breaking and rapid kick. Seth <laughs> knows all about that from Silver Spoon's day. Ah, you don't need this. There's Fletcher slow to get up, covering that kick. Hmm. Yeah, he's your defensive end and deep snapper for blocking for that kick, rather. Here he is. Here's the end of the play. And he's engaged with the defender, Brookins, as he gets tackled, just comes down on the back of the leg and guts it. Ah. I mean, it's, it's all part of the game. You know, last night, Spokane, they had the big win on the road at Iowa, but they lost a, a couple big players, a couple receivers. And, you know, this is interesting. It, it looks like Aaron Garcia done for the night. And here comes a name that most college football fans recognize, and Mitch Mustang, former Arkansas Razorback at USC Trojan. And you got to think, you've got a quarterback who's 42 years old. He's a fighter, and he's going to he's gonna say all night long, I need to be in there and get these reps with my teammates. But you need to get your backup reps as well, because the old saying, he's one play away from being the starter for the rest of the way, right? And as you mentioned, college football fans relatively familiar with the story of Vince Mustaine as he got into California, the top quarterback in the country coming out of high school, went to Arkansas, had a few tribulations there, transferred to USC. His college football career never really panned out the way that his immense potential really seemed to dictate that it would have. Actually signed with the Georgia Force in the Arena Football League last season and went on to play single-A baseball with the Chicago White Sox instead. But now if you're going to study behind anyone, I mean, a, a guy who's thrown well over 1,200 career touchdown passes has set pretty much every statistical record in professional football history for a quarterback. You're looking at all the numbers Aaron Garcia's put up. If you're looking to play at a high level, being understudy to someone, this must stay in the right spot. Now let's hope that Jabari Fletcher is all right. Doesn't look like he'll be returning to this game with 631 left. And just watching Mustaine warm up before the game, we were both down at field level. This guy's got an RPG attached to his right arm. I mean, he can help it. They say he can really hump that baseball as well. Here's our first look at Mitch Mustaine tonight. Six foot three, 230 pounder. <laughs> right on cue. He rifles that one in there to Willis. Hey, that was painful. We might have to put this in super slow-mo. I'm not sure we can keep up with this football. <laughs> Wasn't exactly a pretty spiral. But it had some weight behind it. Well, there's his first hit. As coming right up the middle, Glasper, the Mac linebacker. Nobody touched him. We talked about the box at halftime. Tyree Glasper 
They just run an elf step where the note goes towards one A gap. The back twists right around protection. Does not pick it up because the fullback is leaving the backfield. And you get pressure that quick in your face. I don't care if it's your second snap from professional football. There is nothing you can do about it. Looks for the quick throw this time. And there's a souvenir, Seth Bonner. Guys, go away with this. From this game, what do you do tomorrow to do for yourself? Well, I mean, we got a bye week, which is probably the worst thing because we got we to gotta live with this for a week. Can't really do anything next week to get back on track. But, I mean, the main thing is we got to stay together and, and hold the course. It's a long season. You know, I mean, these guys lost a lot of ga or lost games during the regular season last year, came back and won the championship. And that's how this league works. So we got a long, long way to go. We got to just continue to get better. It's early week three. You guys got, as you say, a long way to go. How do you like the makeup of your team? Have you seen the right things from your guys in this kind of situation over on the back? I mean, it's, you know, we're, we're going to be 2-1 and one after tonight, and uh, that's, I mean, that's not a bad start. It's not where we want to be. We want to be 3-0. and oh. It didn't happen tonight, but I mean, the group here, the guys, the players, you know, these guys are stuck together, and it's, we're going to get a lot better, and, and I mean, it's going to take that. There's a lot of new guys here. I appreciate it, AJ. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, guys. Yeah. Well said. While you guys were talking, almost the fourth interception of the night, three charge to Aaron Garcia. There won't be a fourth, but a lot like baseball, must stay in a baseball player. You know, when somebody loops one in the shallow, uh, the shallow center field, it's a real ugly hit, but it looks like a line drive the next day in the box score. That's what we got right here. Should have been intercepted, but it ended up in the hands of the receiver. Williams for a touchdown. Extra point try is no good, so the Sabercats just get six. But right now, seeing all fastballs for Mr. Mustaine. May need to work on a few off-speed pitches here. And that's the right decision there for Fred Williams. He had a quarterback who left the pocket, went on the double move. But the defensive back couldn't come up with it. Fred Williams goes down, clutched it right off his shoe tops. And then goes in for six. Marquise Floyd had an opportunity to pick. Fred Williams, his first game of the season here. All-American at St. Cloud State. But these two of the preeminent franchises in the history of the Arena Football League. We talked about how great the West Division is, and this this rivalry between these two teams has been in place for a number of years. The Sabercats franchise, 17 years in the Arena Football League, been to four Arena Bowls. They've won three of them. Aaron Garcia now as their starting quarterback, all-time AFL leader with really working on 56,000 career passing yards. The Arizona Rattlers, we know that the main quarterback that people still think about and associate with this team is on the sidelines for us right now, Mr. Cedric Bonner. Three Arena Bowl wins, two of them courtesy of Mr. Bonner, and of course, Nick Davila brought another Arena Bowl title here to Phoenix last season for the Rattlers. Single season record holder in passing yards and passing touchdowns. Lucky Cooper went into the Hall of Fame for the Rattlers last season. They've got two more on the way next Friday night in Randy Gatewood and Cedric Bonner. There's a few relationships between the franchises, too. Coach Kevin Guy won an Arena Bowl as an assistant with the San Jose Sabercats back in 2007. There's Gray thrown down. When you look at the West Division, arguably the best division, in arena football right now, Spokane also undefeated, and Arizona will stay that way, and the best team in ball. These two teams here tonight have won 14 of the 15 West Division titles since the four-division format was introduced in 1995. So, just like San Jose, they will also sit down the Vila, Arizona will, and here's Murrieta. And Jason's first pass, incomplete, should have been caught, right in the hands of Rod Windsor. Illegal formation defense, so the right defensive end is too wide. Five-yard penalty, repeat the down. Jason Murrieta from not too far from here, a northern Arizona product. Had a school record, 34 career touchdown passes as a senior in Northern Arizona. Not much action last year. 12 out of 23 passes. 
161 yards, five touchdowns last year for the Rattlers. The former lumberjack hands it off to Armstrong. He's chopped down on the carry. And there are the final numbers on the night for Nick Davila. Six touchdowns, no interceptions. Had a great week last week as well against Utah. He went 285 yards and seven touchdowns. Arizona feeling pretty good right now as they all move to 3-0. Seen here, and you've seen them in week one beat Philly, a good Philly team. And they get a win last week, a big one against another good Utah team on the road, really handled them. Here they handled what a lot of people thought, in the coaches' poll anyway, the number two team in the league in San Jose is this Arizona team better than last year's Arena Bowl champion team. They're most certainly looking like it. We're very early in the season. This only week three, but when you look at every phase of the game for the Arizona Rapids, you look at the quarterback position where Nick Davila is playing probably even better than he did last season. A more consistent Davila, a more comfortable Davila. And then you look at the offensive line, pass protection, so solid. The wide receiver position, and Maurice Pure by being hurt, that would really be a big shock to most teams. But even with Purify out, you've still got Rod Winston. You've still got Tyson Pooch, Kerry Reed, Jared Perry. It's really an embarrassment of riches at the wide receiver position for the Rattlers. And then defensively, ball hawks in the secondary and people who can rush the quarterback up front. Every phase of the Rattlers, even the kicker position, is impressive. Well, that'll take us to the one-minute warning. 73 to 47. All Rattlers here tonight. No filler, no balance, just full throttle rock and roll. Monster, the brand new album from Kiss, featuring Hell or Hallelujah. We're Rascal Flats, and we are so proud to serve as ambassadors for the Jason Foundation and all of its efforts in addressing the national health problem of youth suicide. Are you aware that suicide is the third leading cause of death for our youth ages 10 to 24, only surpassed by accidents and homicide? It's also one of the leading causes of preventable death in our nation today. So whether you're a student, educator, or parent, you can help make a difference in your own community. Visit jasonfoundation.com to learn how you can start making a difference today. Well, there's the left hand wrapped up, Maurice Purify. You mentioned him, and still unavailable, injured last week, last year's First team All Arena player. Well, in the quarterfinals against the San Jose team last year, he caught 10 passes for 134 yards and four touchdowns. And you're right, they don't really miss him here tonight against one of the best defenses around. It's certainly looking right now like they don't miss him. You know, as you go through the long stretch of Arena Football League season, 18 regular season games, 19 weeks overall when you throw in the bye. Attrition ends up setting in at some point, but they've just got so much depth and you've got a quarterback playing at the level that Dick Dobby was playing at. Even if they can put in some of their less talented guys, which across the board right now, they're all immensely talented, but if they do have to go to second-tier players, Nick Dobbyla can still help them pick up their level of play. Uh, a hard-fought one yard from Murrieta, but he didn't want the clock to stop. And the Rattlers of Arizona will move to 3-0, hanging 73 points on the board on a division rival San Jose.
That'll do it from the Valley of the Sun tonight. Tune in next Saturday at 11.30 p.m. Eastern as Philadelphia takes on Iowa in a big night for arena football. For Anthony Heron and Cedric Bonner and our entire crew, I'm James Bates. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to cbssports.com. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. We now take you from the Valley of the Sun to Hotlanta with Brent Stover in the gang for NCAA March Madness 360. Presented by Buick. Brent, it's all yours, my man. You can't mess with perfection, but you can moisturize it. New Gold Bond Men's Lotion. Skin strengthening proteins plus seven intensive moisturizers. Dry skin becomes healthy. Good looking. New Gold Bond Men's Lotion. Man up with Gold Bond. <laughs> for the PBR Built Ford Tough Series, Sunday at 8, only on CBS Sports Network. Yeah. Y'all step on that horn. Step on that horn. It's only one goal. It's only one goal. That's the way. That's the way. They say you only get one shot, watching the clock, hoping I make it, that drive, that come from inside, when chasing greatness, that pride, that never say die, tying my laces, knowing time is not on my side, so I gotta take it, what we work for, sweating we hurt for, lose come back and we want more, feel like a turf war, so I make sure they don't score, don't score, leave it all on the court, for the love of the competition, competition. no tears in your eyes, the fear in the eyes of your opposition, March Madness. Welcome in NCAA March Madness 360 presented by Buick from Centennial Park, Atlanta, Georgia. What a beautiful day turning into a, uh, a perfect night here in the South. And for Michigan, uh, all things are perfect right now. They advance to the title game for the first time in 20 years. Brent Stilver alongside Pete Gillen, Ala Aldenabi as well. And guys, 61-56 over on CBS. It is a final. Just ended moments ago. And uh, Michigan outlasts Syracuse 61-56. Great game. Terrific shooting by Michigan. Did an excellent job. Eight three-pointers. Tremendous passing. Great job with the assists. And Mitch McGarry was spectacular. Ten points, six rebounds, six assists. He was phenomenal. I thought the point guards negated themselves. Michael Carter-Williams did not play well. Trey Burke went through a lot of stretches without being effective. But I thought it was McGarry and the that set up really good open looks that they were able to knock down. I thought that was the key. Michigan didn't shoot well, but they were able to knock down key shots at key junctures of the game. McGarry, three double-doubles now in the NCAA tournament. He had the 